dominated OU as of late, and certainly coming off that win over Iowa last week, they've got to be riding awfully high right now. Well, they are riding quite high right now. This, that's it's true, Bob, but the thing you have to uh, kind of watch out for in a situation like this is they don't have a letdown. A team like OU early in the season really didn't test the Cowboys that much, but they've come on strong late in the season, as the Cowboys have too, but when they, after you have a big match like they have at Iowa, I think that uh, could be a close match tonight. I think some of the fans are looking for a blowout, but I'd say it could go down to the wire. The Gallagher Hall fans are always looking for the Sooners to be blown out, but we will see if that happens here tonight. A big crowd on hand. Glad you're with us here for great wrestling action on Tulsa Cable Sports. Tonight, KAUT Sports presents two of the nation's best college wrestling teams. Number two ranked Oklahoma State battles it out against number three ranked Oklahoma for the 107th time. Live from Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. Tonight, the top dog when the new ratings come out. The series, OSU a dominating lead. They've won 81, just lost just 19 to the Sooners and have tied six. On December 9th of 83, just a couple of months ago, the Cowboys took a 27-13 decision down in Norman. Bob Carpenter back along with Dave Martin. We'll have the introductions coming up for you in just a moment. Dave, as far as you're concerned, what are the keys to victory for the Cowboys as the home team here tonight? And at the same time, what does OU have to do to upset OSU? Well, the big thing, Bob, is, is how they get started in the first three matches. We saw last week when Oklahoma State wrestled Iowa, the key where the momentum got turned toward Oklahoma State's favor was when they won that first two matches. They were behind in both of those. They came back and got some narrow victories. I think that's the same way it's going to start off tonight. Uh, Oklahoma State could win or lose all three of the first matches. As you can see at 118 pounds, each wrestler, they've split. One of them won at Caesars Palace, one of them won during the duel meet. At 126, uh, John Smith has beaten Zimmer, and he's also tied him in the duel. At 134, even though Clary Anderson's the national champion, he's been beaten four out of five times by Clint Burke. So looking at it from OU's standpoint, they could possibly win all three of the first. If they would do something like that, the momentum would definitely slip to them, and it could go right down to the wire. If Oklahoma State were to go out and win two out of those first three, I would have to give the edge to them. They're better in the, in the heavier weights. Coming into the season, a lot of people had questions about the Sooners in the heavyweight area because they lost so many great wrestlers from that area last year. Obviously, uh, Stan Abel's been able to get some people in there to do the job, but is it as good as OSU's? Well, on paper, OSU is a better team. Obviously, they're going to come out ranked number one next year, next week, barring a, an upset here tonight. Uh, they've got some strong wrestlers, 167-pounder, the best wrestler probably in the United States, uh, Mike Sheets. They've got good wrestler in Carl Lyons, who upset uh, defending national champion Pete Bush at 190. Oklahoma State, though, is unranked at 177. They're unranked at heavyweight. So sometimes when you have two unranked wrestlers like we do at heavyweight tonight, that could be just an exciting match is where you've got somebody like the number one and number three ranked wrestler like Mike Sheets and Melvin Douglas. So you don't really go by the rankings whether or not it's that exciting. We've got a big crowd here, as usual, at Gallagher Hall in Stillwater when these two squads meet. The Cowboys come in 18-0. Tommy Chesbro, the coach, 22, or rather 226, 26 and 0 in his career, counting the 18-0 this year in duels. And Stan Abel of OSU, or rather of OU in 12 years, 176, 56 and 4. Obviously, two of the greatest records in college wrestling involving the coaches, and these are two class men at the helm here tonight. That's right. There you can see Stan sitting on the bench right there. Anytime you get these two teams together, it's going to be an unbelievable night. There's a good look at former Dallas Cowboy running back Walt Garrison. He, of course, is an OSU alum who played some great college football here in Stillwater. A guy with an Oklahoma Outlaws jacket is with him, so I would have to think that his appearance here has something to do with the Outlaws exhibition game here at Lewis Field in Stillwater coming up tomorrow afternoon against the Houston Gamblers in USFL play. And obviously, Walt is delighted to be here and the reception he's getting from the crowd here at Gallagher Hall. Well, that's right, Bob. What we're talking about is we are hosting the Outlaws' first exhibition game tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 here at Lewis Stadium. And I think that they're going to use Walt Garrison as something of the coin flip. So he's coming early to watch the big matchup tonight and then go on to the... Now from Gallagher Hall, our national anthem.
Gallagher Holland Stillwater, Bob Carpenter along with Dave Martin as the OSU Cowboys. With a record of 18-0, hosts the Sooners of Oklahoma. Dave, we got some good matchups tonight. Talk about it. Well, here we are at 118 pounds. Uh, the Sooners, we got Melvin Gorey, 11 and 13 on the year against Mark Perry, 25 and 3. Don't let the record uh, fool you right here. They've each split a match earlier in the year. Then we go to 126. 32 and 3, Mark Zimmer from OU, probably one of their best wrestlers. He's ranked number four in the nation right now against John Smith, a freshman from Oklahoma State. You can see his record right there, and he's currently ranked number three in the nation. And we move on to 134. That'll be our third matchup of the evening. We don't get any better match than this because this is a repeat of last year's NCAA Finals where Clary Anderson was victorious over Clint Burke. This match can go either way, and this is probably one of the crucial matches for the team outcome tonight. At 142. 142 now, we'll have Darren Higgins against Luke Scovey. This is a freshman. Uh, Higgins did wrestle in the first duel on December 9th. Luke Scove is currently ranked number five in the nation his way. Should be a good matchup, though. At 150, a senior from we move on to 150. Hard for Darren to come here, being that his dad's the coach. And then he has to wrestle Kenny Monday, ranked number one in the nation, probably one of the best wrestlers in the nation. No question about that. From Tulsa, Washington High School, our folks in the Tulsa area are very familiar with him. Now we go to 158. This is a repeat matchup of the a match in December. Johnny Johnson for OU versus Billy Dykeman from OSU. Got the number two ranked wrestler in Dykeman, number seventh ranked wrestler in Johnny Johnson. Now to 167. Melvin Douglas is currently ranked number three in the nation. Mike Sheets, OSU's returning MVP from last year's tournament, ranked number one in the nation. They don't get any better than Mike Sheets. At 167, now we go up 10 to 177. This is Dan Chade, he's 34 and four in the year. He's, he, along with Clint Berker and Zimmer, are OU's three most outstanding wrestlers. He's wrestling Alan Lochner, who has a record of 14, 12, and three on the year. 190. David Palmer is a, he's a good freshman for the Sooners. He's gonna come on strong. He's got a tall order tonight, Carl Lyons. Carl currently ranked number five in the nation, but last week was victorious over the defending national champion, so he's gonna move up the rankings. And we talked a little bit earlier about the heavyweight matchup, Dave. That's right, we've got Mark Tatum against Perry Kaufman. Neither wrestler ranked, but some of those matches could be the best, and tonight it could go right down to the last match. They love their college wrestling here at Gallagher Hall in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The visitors, number three in the nation at this time with a dual record of 16 and three. And you're looking at a club that'll probably be number one this week, the OSU Cowboys, 18 and 0, after the big win. And I, I don't know, I hesitate a little bit to call it an upset because the difference between number one and number two isn't that great. But OSU did what you would call, at least by the ratings, an upset here at Gallagher Hall over Iowa last, year, last week. What a big victory. Victory that was for Tommy Jesbro and his squad. And now we're ready for the matchup at 118. We're looking at Melvin Gorey, freshman from Tulsa McLean, 11 13 and 3 this year for OU. He'll be opposed by Mark Perry, a junior out of Dell City. His record so far, 25 and 3 this year. He is the number three ranked wrestler in the nation in his weight class. There is Mark Perry. What about this matchup, Dave? Well, I tell you, this is a match that could be a lot of throws in. As we see the earlier match in the year, uh, Mark Perry decisively beat Gorey 20 to two in the Caesars Palace tournament, came back in the dual meet, and uh, everybody expected Perry to easily win. Gorey threw him down on his back and went on to win the match. Each wrestler here is capable of winning. I'd say, based on how they've done the latter part of the season, Mark Perry has to be favored here. He's got the 25 and three record and currently ranked third in the nation. But the thing with Melvin Gorey is, he's young, he's only a freshman, and he's got the capabilities of making a big explosive move. He can go out, and as we call in wrestling, he's a thrower. He likes to hook people up, lateral drop them, and do some hip tosses and things like this. So he's always dangerous because he can get in on you when you least expect it and score not just a takedown, but also back points. Ironically, Dave, Mark Perry of OSU has not had very good success against the Sooners. He's only won one out of five matches. 
That's that right. And he's wrestled some tough people for OU over the years. Right now, tonight, he can really be instrumental in the in the outcome of the dual meet if he can get the Cowboys started off because everybody expected him to get started the right way on the winning track down in the match in December. But I tell you, Gorey took it to him and put him on his back and really helped the Sooners. There we go for OSU. There's a nice move by Mark Perry. They went to a nice little ankle pick right there. Tripped him down, put him down for the two-point takedown. Now that's what Perry needs to do. If he's got to keep away from Gorey, the last match, you know, in defense of, of Mark, he was injured quite badly that night. A lot of people didn't think he was going to wrestle. So he, it was a big upset when Gorey beat him. He got the two-point takedown about 55 seconds into period number one. Well, he's trying to turn him right here, but he doesn't really have a good bar arm in there. See the referee kind of making sure that he isn't doing a potentially dangerous hold. David Kincaid, by the way, is the referee this evening. See that arm? You see that arm that he's got pulled up by his thigh right there? He's got to watch that he doesn't get that going against the joint, and that's when the referee calls it potentially dangerous. Minute 15 left in period number one. Mark Perry of OSU registering two points so far. He's also riding 51 seconds of advantage time. You can still see when, when your camera pans out a little farther, you take a look at Mark's leg. He's still got the bandage and the brace on there, and that's the knee that he hurt before they wrestled the first time. Well, the Wednesday of that week, that's when he first injured that knee, and he's still having a tape, so it was pretty serious. Boy, a knee, a knee injury has to be very difficult for a wrestler to deal with, Dave, because of the, the pressure put on those Ooh, knees okay. and the power that is necessary in this sport. That's right. They're, and the thing is that they wrestle so many matches and they're competing so hard, they just don't have time for it to mend. You just have to work it in while, while you're going along competing at the same time. Mark Perry continuing to rack up that advantage time. It's up to a minute 25 at this point with 40 seconds left in the first period. It looks at this point like Mark's real high on his wrestle, but you can see now we get a close-up shot where he's got that half Nelson in on the other side. Got the bar arm, so it's pretty hard for Gorey to move it all right here. See the referee in there tight. See that? You can see that arm. He's trying to make sure that he doesn't get that little illegal position. Mark Berry, a junior out of Dell City, wrestling a freshman from Tulsa McLean, Melvin Gorey of Oklahoma. This is the first match of the night at 118. You see Coach Chespro, he's really wanting those back points. That's one of the things that can really get you in the driver's seat in the match this early if you can turn your opponent, put him on his back. Right there, David Kincaid, just at the end of the period, he warned Gorey for stalling. So after the first period here, it's 2-0 OSU. Two minutes and five seconds of riding time registered so far by Mark Perry, who's been dominating. As you look at Stan Abel there momentarily. Stan Abel, 12 years at the helm of Oklahoma. There's the scoring matchup so far. Well, if that first period was any indication of the rest of the match, Mark Perry was definitely in control. He, he made a nice ankle pick to a takedown and did a good job of riding him. Almost had him turn toward the end. Gorey really wasn't doing anything and did get warned right there at the end, so that may turn into being something uh, later on in the match. Mark Perry, career record as a junior, 57, 16-1 coming in. We gave you Melvin Gorey's 83-84 record of 11-13-3 as a freshman. That obviously is his career record. 1-1 one one against OSU is Mr. Gorey. As we said, ironically, 1-4, Mark Perry against Oklahoma, but as Dave pointed out, down through the years, he's wrestled some of Oklahoma's best. Now he's trying to turn his opponent back into the match so he's got a chance to turn him over. This is a situation where the crowd's getting a little worked up because they think uh, Melvin Gorey's stalling and not really getting back to his knees and, and working offensively underneath. I'll tell you, it's hard to get up and do much. I'll tell you, he's going to get turned right here. He's got him in a tough situation. You can see right there, it's close. Plenty of time, 55 seconds to go. He's got a figure four in the head. It's going to be close if he can get out of this or not. I don't know, Bob. Melvin Gorey fighting for his life right now against Mark Perry. It's been a Perry-dominated match so far. At 118, first matchup of the evening. Well, you 
you can see right there, Melvin's still got his shoulder up, but he's getting closer and closer, and I don't know if he can hold out for another 30 seconds. 25 seconds left now in the second period. Three minutes and 45 seconds of riding time for Mark Perry. Now the rule states even though your body's out of bounds, as long as your shoulder and supporting points, in this case being your shoulders, is in bounds and wrestling continues. So they're not going to stop it. There it is. Seconds remained in period number two when he got it. 3.56 of running to running time in the first matchup of the evening. The OSU Cowboys over the center, 6 0. Score from Gallagher Hall on Tulsa Cable Sports. Here's Don Wallace to tell you about the 1980. 6 0. 118-pounder out of Dell City over Melvin Gorey of Oklahoma. Now we're ready for the 126 matchup, Dave Martin. Mark Zimmer against John Smith. Zimmer of OU, Smith of OSU. He's a freshman from Dell City. Zimmer, a senior from Columbus, Ohio, and All-American. This should be a great matchup. Uh, Mark Zimmer was defeated by John Smith in the Caesars Palace earlier in the year, but they came back to the dual meet. Zimmer was leading the match all the way. I think it was 5-1 to one in the third period, and John came on and, and tied it right at the end of the match. So this one could be one of the better matches of the night. Zimmer, 32, 3-1 this year, career 71-14-1. He's 4-1-1 one one against OSU. John Smith this year, 25-2-2, two two, having an outstanding freshman season. Well, a nice move by Zimmer. Tripped him right in there and got a takedown early in the match. Only about 30 seconds into the match, and he's got the lead. That's the thing that's been happening, Bob, in the last couple matches to John Smith. He's been wrestling some tough people. He wrestled uh, Trezino from Iowa, who's really tough. Here we're going to take a look at the replay. But he's had a tendency to get behind early in the matches. Here you see here, uh, John was kind of trying to hit that little head snap. You see he reached through there, caught him right at the knee, and just pushed him right over. And that's a tendency that John's had lately. He's gotten behind early in the matches. You can't afford to get behind people like Mark Zimmer or Scott Trezino from uh, Iowa. You just can't do that and stay in the match. These people are too tough. Now he comes back and gets his escape right away. There's still two minutes to go in the first period. So he's, he's all right in this match. He needs to get an offensive takedown here or so, else Zimmer's going to control it. So we've got a lot of scoring taking place in the first minute of this match, of the first period. A two-point takedown for Oklahoma's Mark Zimmer, then an escape by John Smith of OSU. Well, John's in tight right here to single. They're on the edge of the mat. It's questionable if he can complete it here. Zimmer's real tough in this position. Got to get that leg up in the air. Try to keep your head to the inside. You see how Zimmer's trying to fight his head and throw it to the outside. That you don't have near the leverage in that position. John's trying to dig to keep it in there. See Zimmer keep trying to throw it to the side. This is one freshman of OSU that's been tough on the seniors so far. At the 83 Caesars Palace, he decision mark at 8-5. 83 duel, they tied 6-6. This is a tough, tough freshman, Dave Martin. Nice move by John. You saw when he got both hands up on that ankle, lifted it up in the air. As soon as the wrestler puts his hands on his on the mat and gets his weight on it, that's a takedown. So now we got a minute and six to go. There you see Mark Zimmer's career and season record. Outstanding record this year. 32, 3, and 1. There's a minute and six to go. Riding time very close so far. Nine seconds in favor of the OSU wrestler. Mark Zimmer seems to have gotten a lot more um, consistency this year than he's had in the past. And he said that uh, in one of the newspaper articles this, this week that his new assistant coach uh, from Iowa, uh, Lanny Davidson, has really helped him. And he's been a lot more consistent, feels like he's had a better year than he's ever had. And I guess his record indicates that. I was impressed right there the way John Smith came back. He got taken down early. Sometime as a freshman, you might lose your composure and just not know what to do early in the match. He got taken down, got an escape, and went right back in and got the takedown. Now he's got Mark Zimmer in a situation where he's got a score with only 30 seconds to go here in the first period. 30 seconds. As you heard the PA announcer and Dave Barton, less than 30 seconds now. In the first period, we're at 126. Mark Zimmer of Oklahoma, John Smith of OSU. Cowboys at 118 took a 6-0 decision. There's the escape right there. That ties it up. 
3-3 at this point in this match. Only five seconds left in the first period. 37 seconds of riding time for OSU in this match. And that's it for the first period at 126. Very offensive from a scoring standpoint so far, Dave. A little bit unlike the first matchup we saw tonight at 118. That's right. Good match. Good first period from both wrestlers right there. Of course, you, they're John Smith ranked number three in the nation. Mark Zimmer's ranked number four. It should be a good matchup. And I like it tonight because it's been offensive. We haven't seen them just defensively feeling each other out. You see Stan Abel right there looking on. There's another nice move. Nice roll out, went forward, got away, got an escape right early in the match. This is what good wrestling is all about right here. Lots of action. You get matches like this, you bring plenty of people in the stands. You know, some of the th people, things that people have been saying in the past about wrestling is getting a little boring because they do too much stand around, locking up an upper body and not a lot of moves. Get matches like this, you'll always have people come and always have them watching because there's a lot of excitement. 4-3, Cowboys lead at this point in the match at 126. Zimmer's in tight on a single right there. You see him trying to step over. John blocked out of it. Good movement by both wrestlers. A nice offensive move by Zimmer, but equally as good defensive counter by John Smith. This has been an action-filled matchup. We've got a minute 10 left in the second period. Well, you can see each wrestler right here really fighting for position. That's what they call it. Get the inside position on those arms there. John Smith of Oklahoma State, furthest away from you. Mark Zimmer of Oklahoma in the red. We saw John shoot on that single. A nice counter almost got behind him by Zimmer. Talked earlier about the OSU domination of the series down through the years at 81, 19, and 6. Obviously, the Sooners have done better in recent years, but OSU here in this building, Gallagher Hall, 43, 9, and 1 against Oklahoma. Look at that counter move by John. Unbelievable. Two points for a takedown. The crowd reacts. He's trying to get at some back points here, but I don't think he's going to be able to because they got their arms and legs tied up too much. Only 10 seconds left in the second period. 6-3 to three at this point, OSU. John's got to watch the time right there. Well, that was quite a move, right? John Smith looked like Zimmer had the upper hand there. He countered it, kind of tipped him on through. Got the takedown. Now he leads 6-3 to three going to the last period. He's taking control of the match at this point. Riding time belongs to OSU at this point as well with 51 seconds. Points at stake there as well, Dave. That's right. Every time you get one minute more than your opponent, you can score one additional point. Now, you can have one minute more, clear up to five or six minutes more. You still only, only get one additional point. John's getting a little high right there. You see Zimmer tipping out the back door there. Breaks his grip, and there's the escape. That makes it 6-4. From the side here, we see Coach Abel coming over to address the bench. Well, what Coach Abel was asking right there was, we want to make sure that uh, John didn't have his hands locked. And the reason he did have them locked, the reason there wasn't a penalty call, because the arm was still in there. And if he had his arms locked around his head without an arm, there would have been a one-point technical violation. That's all he was doing was coming over there and just questioning it from the referee. Never hurts to make people aware of those sort of things. Keep them thinking about it. Boy, this has been a very exciting matchup. I think this one's going to go right down to the last seconds. Even though John's ahead 6-3, Zimmer's really coming on strong here. There, just to stop while he snapped back up his head gear. Minute 20 left now in the third and final period. OSU enjoying a minute two advantage time here. There he's in right again on that single leg tight. He's in there tight, Johns. Turned his side to him, he comes up across the back. He's trying to get behind him. He reaches back down to the knee again. John made a good counter once before to turn it into a takedown for himself. 
55 seconds now in the third now he's period. he's got the ankle. When he covered the ankle there, the referee gave him the two points. As they go off the mat, 49 seconds to go. See, now we're down to a one-point match. The riding time has gone back to less than a minute. And it's 6-6. Zimmer and Smith at this point. The base of John Smith. Mark Zimmer coming in from behind. It's a senior against a freshman. But I'll tell you, this freshman is tough. Oh, he's, he's a good one. I, and I made a mistake there. I said it was a one-point match, but we take the riding time away, and it's a tie match. 6-6, six to six, 50 seconds to go. John's got to get an escape. Zimmer will probably you'll see him let him go here because he can't ride him out to win. He lets him go. Now John Smith leads 7-6. to six. Zimmer has to have a takedown to win. John Smith has got to get the keep from getting taken down. Let's go right down to the last seconds. I'll tell you, Bob, we saw a couple of them last week in the last seconds where they were decided. There will not be any points for advantage time either. The seconds cannot add up to a minute for OSU at this point. Well, you so see, we've oh, only got 14 seconds remaining. And you see OU's bench calling for a stall warning, but at this point there hasn't been any warning, so before he can lose a penalty point, he has to first be warned. There's only 14 seconds to go. If John Smith wrestles aggressively at all, he should have Mark Zimmer in a tough situation because he can get warned once, then they have to stop it again to penalize him. You'll see Zimmer come right across the mat, try to make all the action he can. Now, you can't back out of the circle there. Smith trying to hold his own here. There's the warning right there. Stop the match, there's 10 seconds to go. But there you see the referee cautioning. That, that, that means that John started too fast. Well, that's one way to not be called for stalling is to be overly aggressive. Five seconds left. Three, two, and one. There's OSU, John Smith, 7-6 over Mark Zimmer. The freshman prevails over the senior. Seven, six. The OSU Cowboys in the lower weight divisions, which Dave Bart said were so crucial here tonight, are off to a good start. We'll be back with more from Gallagher Hall in a moment on Tulsa Cable Sports. Some of my guys to have fried chicken with me. You know what they said? Many empty seats at Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. The OSU Cowboys 9-0 over Oklahoma after the first two matchups at 118 and 126. Mark Perry with a pin. John Smith with a decision prevailing so far. A junior beating a freshman, a freshman beating a senior. Up next, Dave, is 134. And Oklahoma has another All-American, and they cannot afford to have this one lose like the last one did, but OSU's got a great wrestler matched up with it. That's right. This is a repeat match of last year's NCAA Finals. And Claire Anderson, now the defending national champion against Clint Burt. This should be a great match. One of the things the Sooners didn't want to do in talking to their coaches before the match, they didn't want to drop those matches early to Oklahoma State. By the way, they've gone 9-0 down in team score. This is a crucial match. They almost have to win this. Claire Anderson's been coming on strong. Late in the year, he got started a little slow. This match should be a great one. Kind of unusual to see Claire Anderson ranked number six. He is seldom in that position. Clint Burke, number two in the nation at 134. Well, that's true, Bob, and, and just talking to uh, amateur wrestling news people before the match started tonight, they'll probably rank the winner of this match right here number one in the nation. Claire, last week in the dual meet against Iowa, beat Randall, who was ranked number one. And so at this point in the match, or in the season, whoever wins this is going to be ranked number one, and the other one probably two or three right in that area. And there the same holds Burke. through for OSU as a team. Winning this match tonight would certainly make them number one. Claire Anderson, you see his season stats, 18-3-2, 67-14-4 career. Record against Oklahoma is 3-6. Clint Burke, 24-4 this year, 72-14 career. He has had outstanding success against the Cowboys. He's won 5 of 6. Well, they've only wrestled one time this year. They wrestled in the finals of the Caesars Palace Tournament, and uh, Clint Burke won 7-2. At the dual meet, they didn't actually wrestle. Nick Nevelle wrestled for OU, and uh, he lost 2-1 to one to Claire Anderson. The thing is, they've wrestled five times, Bob. Uh, Claire has been beaten four of those times by Clint Burt, but the one that counted, the national finals, that's the one that uh, Anderson won. And you know how people have a tendency to forget after that. You win that one, and uh, from that point on, that you're still the national champion. Burke was in tight on a single leg, but Claire did a good job of kicking him out of it. Didn't get in any trouble at all. 
minute 35 left in period number one. No one has registered any advantage time and no scoring as of yet. One of the big differences you see from college wrestling to high school and, and below wrestling is he sets explosive moves. In high school, there's a lot of constant scoring, constant moving. In college, you get two good or great wrestlers like these right here. It'll just be one explosive move, so you just can't can't afford to even turn your head because that's when the scoring goes on. They just they move in, move for position. They're pummeling there on the feet, trying to get hand position, make one quick setup, and that'll be the shot. So there you, right there, you saw Burke try for a double. Really didn't get good penetration on that. Dave, one thing I've noticed about Clint Burke very early in the match and several times he has more or less reached out and made contact with Claire Anderson's head. What is the motive behind that move? Well, they're just trying to, it's called a setup. They're trying to make the guy turn to the side. When you want to score a uh, takedown there, you got to get his body turned and then shoot in on one of the legs. Clint Burke is a tremendous explosiveness. That's one thing you always look for in a, good, a great wrestler. Good balance, very explosive on their feet, very explosive underneath. Well, both these wrestlers have this. Claire has been a little, I think, a little hesitant earlier in the year. He wasn't as offensive as he was last year toward the end of the season, but he has a tendency to be a slow starter. And he's coming on stronger. When you beat that Randall from Iowa last week, he showed that he's getting back in the form that he had uh, the one the national championships. Now, there you see the referee giving a warning to OU, 20 seconds to go. If they end the first period and there's a 0-0 score, somebody has to be a warn. So a lot of times you'll see him in the last 15 or 20 seconds without a score, take the wrestler that's been least aggressive and go ahead and warn him right then. I think that's what you saw the case being. There's only five seconds to go in this period. No riding time, no points in the first period. Ah. Oklahoma's Clint Burke, a senior out of Delaware City, Delaware. Claire Anderson, an OSU senior out of Olean, New York. Bob, there really wasn't a lot of action in that first period. One good, quick move by Clint Burke. He got in on the leg. Claire Anderson kicked right clean through. They really didn't even get into a exchange right there. So the rest of the first period was just spent kind of jockeying for position, but really no offensive moves made. Oklahoma State has been victorious tonight in a pin at 118 by Mark Perry. A decision by John Smith at 126. This is our third matchup of the evening. 134, Clint Burke and Claire Anderson. The Clint got to his feet well right there. Claire did a good job of covering. You see the referee pointing his hand toward him. What they have to do in a situation, once they get to their feet, an offensive man, in this case being Claire Anderson, has to take the man back to the mat. You can't just stand up behind him with your hands locked and not get him back down to the mat. Referee David Kincaid ordering one of the OU wrestlers who is not dressed back away from the mat. One of the things you have to do in a, mate, a meet with so much electricity like this, you've really got to keep control of the coaches because if you lose control of the coaches, the crowd gets involved in it. All kinds of crazy things happen. I've seen them over the years here. And as a referee, if you want to uh, keep those things from happening, you've got to control the coaches all the time. Just don't let them get up. Don't let them get arguing because that keeps the fans from really getting hostile. Almost for Claire Anderson, but Lynn Burke managed to get off the mat. On the other hand, Dave, if you're the visiting team like Oklahoma is here and you have to come into a very intimidating place like Gallagher Hall, you like to gain an edge wherever you can, and obviously one of their wrestlers who was not dressed for action tonight was just trying to make sure that his teammate was hearing from somebody with a friendly voice out there because this can be a, a very tough place to have to wrestle. Well, there's no question about that, Bob. O Oklahoma State has a tremendous advantage in wrestling and in basketball. Anything they do in Gallagher Hall, because the seats are so close, they pack them in here, and the crowd really gets into it. You saw that the other night uh, when the two teams played in the Bedlam Series basketball. I mean, it went right down to the wire. Oklahoma State playing a good game, still beaten by a fine OU team, but the electricity was unbelievable in the, in the field house that night. Okay, Claire's doing a good job here of staying behind Clint Burke and trying to get him broken down. Burke is really powerful in the legs, and he, it's almost impossible for him to keep his body down. See Claire there trying to ride with a little half Nelson. They're just up and down and off the mat here so many times. You've got two great wrestlers here. Last year, Clint Burke consistently defeated people who were ranked higher than he was. Now this year, he finds himself ranked number two in the nation at this point, an All-American, 24 and four this year. Claire Anderson, the aggressor at this point. 
Boy, it's just a good old standoff so far. That's right, and they're both wrestling well. People are crying for points and everything, but sometimes when you get great wrestlers together, it just goes one or two points, and that's probably how it'll be tonight. Unless one of them catches the other one on his back, I don't look for a high-scoring match. There, Anderson over Burke in the NCAA championship, so you're looking at numbers one and two from last year. They don't come any better than this at 134. There he goes. He's got a good good job of holding on and trapping that two-on-one there. He got his arms tied up and was able to take him back down to the mat. You know, one of the nice things about wrestling compared to some of the other sports is we do have a system where they, they really get together at the end of the year, and no matter what the rankings are, it doesn't make any difference. There you see him. He's got that arm trapped. and just pulls him back down to his, to his side. But back to what I was saying, you know, they've got a, a system where we just hook the people up at the end of the year and wrestle off and see who's the best. So That's right. The rankings... I think have really been good in that they've got a lot of fan appeal and people can argue about who's better and who's worse. But really in wrestling, when it gets down to it, it all determines what, what they do in the national tournament. Dave, I want to ask you a question while we have a little time during this standoff type match. You always hear about Iowa, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Iowa State. Those four schools seem to be the dominant schools year after year. Is there a big difference between what they're doing and the rest of, say, the top 20 is doing? Because you rarely see anybody else break into the top three or four teams. Well, there's no question that the two Oklahoma and the two Iowa schools are head and shoulders above the rest of the United States. This year, now this, you know, every year it's different, but this year I would say Oklahoma State and Iowa are head and shoulders above the others. Iowa State had a, a, a lot of seniors on their team last year, lost mo lost all those guys that came back with a relative weak team for them. Only ranked, They're only ranked eighth in the nation at this point. Uh, OU has got a young team, and you see them coming on later in the year and getting back up to their third place ranking. I think that you're seeing those four schools probably have a bigger budget for wrestling. They've got tradition where they'll get those athletes to come there versus maybe going to another school. And there's no question, they have intensity toward their sports, so if a kid's really interested in wrestling, he wants to go to one of those schools. We've only got 15 seconds left in the second period. A minute 45 of advantage time so far for OSU's Claire Anderson. Well, there, Clint Burke made a good move right there. Only five seconds to go in the period. Still scoreless. Well, well, he got one point right there won. at the end of the period. Now, that's just a situation that Clint Burke just wasn't going to say that he couldn't get out. He just kept fighting it, fighting it. A good exchange in wrestling all through that period, but no, no point scored until right there with just like 13 seconds to go in the period where Clint finally got an escape. That, of course, puts Clint Burke in an advantageous position. His first two years at Oklahoma wrestled at 126. Moved up to 134 last year, his junior year. Claire Anderson was OSU's 100th NCAA champion when he finished number one in the nation last year. Well, this is a position, Bob, that Claire's been working on in the last couple of weeks. He's had some trouble earlier in the season getting away because he hasn't been explosive enough from the whistle. Now, there's still a minute, 30 seconds riding time in Anderson's favor. The crowd's going to really get into it. You see Coach Chespro, he's out there cheering him on, telling the ref right there to watch him from locking his hands because sometimes they like to lock their hands right before you get to your feet, keep a guy from getting an escape. But, but if Claire could get out early, he could still have riding time. That could be the decisive thing in a match like this. Dave, in a building in an atmosphere like this, how much coaching can Tommy Chesbro or Stan Abel do to these young men once they're out on the mat? Well, it's real hard for the wrestler to hear the coach, but when they have those little lulls in the action and the coach gets right out there in your face, you can hear what they're saying. But in wrestling, it's, it's a reaction sport. You work with the kid every day so that he reacts. He doesn't. If you're thinking out there, by the time you think through the moves, it's too late. Everything's got to be a reaction. 135 left, third period, 122 of advantage time for OSU, but that is ticking down, and Claire Anderson needs to get an escape here to hope to get any points from that advantage time. And you see him trying to control the hands right there. you got to get those hands. Burke's trying to get his hands together, but he can't. Claire trying to just hit a forward roll or whatever he can do there. Still advantage a minute time. and 10 seconds to go. Advantage time now down below a minute. That's right, there's no riding time at this point, so Clary Anderson has to get out, has to get an escape point here to even tie it. Announcer just said there's less than a minute to go. Burke's doing a good job of riding right here. 
Players trying to get off the mat there and get a new start. Boy, a contrasting matchup here from what we saw in 126 with Mark Zimmer and John Smith. Willie Wren at it with Smith winning 7-6. Here it's 1-0. Clint Burke, third period, 47 seconds remaining over Claire Anderson of OSU. And this is a situation where you see the crowd trying to get in to really spur him on, saying, come on, Claire, you got to get out. Clint Burke's got a tough ride on him at this point. You know, this could go right down to the last seconds, and escape could just end up being a tie. See Clint Burke trying to throw a leg in there and get a crossbody ride. If he can get him broken down in there, he can burn some valuable seconds up at this point. Clint Blair's got to get that leg out of there and get up to his feet. He cannot reach a minute in riding time, so no points will be at stake there. Twenty seconds remaining. Claire Anderson fighting for his life, looking for that escape. Uh, Claire's trying to get underneath that leg, but Burke's still got him in the crotch leg, crotch hole there. He, Ten he's seconds. got him in trouble, but I don't know if he's going to have time to get out. Claire Anderson looked at the clock. Oh, he almost got away. He had his hands locked right there, but the ref didn't see that. Clint, Clint Burke reacting and the crowd reacting to him. Boy, that was a tough match, Dave Martin. Big win for Clint Burke, though. He wrestled a good job. Both of them wrestled well. Oklahoma takes it at 134, but the Cowboys still have the advantage. We've got a matchup at 142 coming up next from Gallagher Hall. Hope you're enjoying it on Tulsa Cable Sports. Gallagher Hall, Stillwater. Cowboys took the first two, but the Sooners came back strong at 134 with Clint Burke. A 1-0 decision over Claire Anderson. OSU leads it 9-3. Here we go, Dave, to 142. Well, we've got a freshman out here, Darren Higgins from Lawton. So this is probably the first time he's been in a, in a Bedlam Series match, and this is a tough one to go out in, especially being in Gallagher Hall and against a wrestler like Luke Scove, who's ranked fifth in the nation. Probably a move up in the next rankings because he beat Jeff Kerber of Iowa last week, who was ranked over him. So far, though, this match has been everything it's been built up to be. A good, exciting match is every match. Uh, the first one ended up in a fall in 4 minutes and 50 seconds for Mark Perry, but it was close up to that point. The next two couldn't couldn't ask for any more. Even though the last one was just a one-point match, good wrestling all the way around. Here you see Higgins just about to get a takedown, and he does. Higgins, nice a move. freshman out of MacArthur High School down in Lawton, 16 and 8 this year, has not wrestled against OSU in that duel back in December. Luke Scove, a sophomore, Long Branch, New Jersey, 24 and 4 this year, 27, 7 and 1. He did not wrestle a whole lot during his freshman year. He's 1-0 against Oklahoma. But the Sooners, with a 2-0 lead right here behind Darren Higgins, threatening to come back and make this duel very even at this point. Now you aren't seeing it on the camera, and you see Stan Abel shaking his head, but, but what that happened right there was the referee, David Kincaid, came over and warned OU's bench. They just got to calm down. They're getting into their, their crying and complaining too much. And that was a warning. Now, if they do that again, they can lose a team point. And that's critical in a match like this. If sure. it goes right down to the last uh, match, you can't afford to lose a point because of a violation like that. Well, it would have been a draw on the last one, and that cost you three points. Well, it's not. I don't know how they hear him, Dave, much less yeah, well, know, it, know who's talking like that. Yeah, now, you, you would leave, lose a team point. You don't lose a point in your own individual match. So it would just be on the team score. There you see Luke coming around for reversal. Well, he just gave him one there. Wow. Well, that was quite an exchange right there. Uh, Darren Higgins was ahead two to nothing. It looked like Luke Scove was going to come right in for reversal. Sure but what did. the referee called it was an escape. Higgins went right back in around him for another takedown and now leads four to one. Well, he got two right as they tumbled off the mat there for the takedown. 4 1 Oklahoma here at 142. Darren Higgins, you got to give him credit right there, did a great job of keep, we, keep, we teach wrestlers all the time, keep wrestling on the edge. Luke Scove let up for just one second. Darren Higgins went right around behind him and got a take point. He's got a commanding 4-1 to one lead early in the match. Luke Scove is a redshirt sophomore. Wrestled as a freshman two years ago, 3-3-1, three, three, and, and then did not wrestle last year. 
Well, this would be a big upset for OU, and they're going to need it because they got down nine to nothing via pin and a decision. They got back in it with a good match. I, th I thought both wrestlers, Clint Burke and Claire Anderson, wrestled well. Not a lot of scoring, but good position they were in, good wrestling, aggressive wrestling. Uh, and Clint Burke won it. You Like you say, you could go right down to the Big 8 Finals this year, go down to the National Finals, they could meet again. Here we are at 142, OU as a team trying to get back into the dual meet. They need a win here. On paper, you would have always, you would have had to pick Luke Scove as a big favorite here. Right in the first period with only a minute 20 to go, he's behind 4-1, to one, freshman Darren Higgins. Boy, the name Scove, of course, very familiar to wrestling fans. His brother Matt finished up at OSU last year. Another brother with Ohio State. But he's in trouble right now at 1-4, a minute remaining in the first period. And now you see Luke coming Aaron out. Two for a takedown. Great move by Scove. Boy, the OSU bench is really reacting now. Well, he got that was a reversal right there. He didn't even though they went toward their feet. It, he just it's called a reversal in that situation, and um, he's now back in the match four to three. There's still 40 seconds, and we're in the first period. So a lot of action in this match. This reminiscent of the 126 match between Mark Zimmer and John Smith. Here you look see a at replay. It, now you see Luke trying to duck out the backside. You see Higgins trying to come around behind him. Luke keeps coming out right there. He catches the leg, comes up behind him. Now when he goes right there, that's where he's got the reversal. Say the thing we've heard it so many times, Bob, that it's practically cliche. But in this situation, anything can happen. In, in the Bedlam series, just anything can happen. There always seems to be a a win where you didn't expect it, a fall you didn't expect it. It's just a, uh, it's such a great wrestling series. So many upsets and so many great matches around it. I mean, I've heard people tell me that they've seen, they've seen sporting events nationwide. I'm talking about Super Bowls, big basketball games, anything you want. But the OSU, OU, Bedlam series ranks right up in there with the electricity in the crowd, the way the people get into it, the excitement here, it ranks right there with any of the events. And I really believe that. Well, I tell you, we've got a great match coming up a little later at 167. Not that these aren't great matches, as you hear the end of the first period with an exciting one so far. Oklahoma's Darren Higgins on top of Luke Scove of OSU, 5-3 at this point. Boy, at 167, Mike Sheets, number one in the nation for OSU. Melvin Douglas, number three in the nation for Oklahoma, senior against the junior. That should be a good one. we got 158 and 150 coming up before we get there. Oklahoma trailing OSU 9-3 in team points at this time. That's a caution point. Now, what that is is the referee is saying you got to get set in a position, and once you're set there, you cannot move. You can't flinch your shoulders. You can't move your hands until he blows the whistle. Darren Higgins moved, and that's a caution. The next time he does that, it could cost him a point. Right away, he comes out, though. I'm impressed with Darren Higgins. He's got explosiveness, and he's made this into a tough match. 6-3 Oklahoma at this point. We're just into period number two. There's plenty of time left, but the way Higgins is wrestling, Luke Scove's going to have to really make some moves to get back in it. You know, just looking through the lineup here, Bob, I, I see something that's probably interesting some of the fans out there, but out of the 20 wrestlers wrestling tonight, 12 of them are native Oklahomans. That's quite a tribute to a, a state that only has about 125, 135 schools wrestling. And 13 of those wrestlers are in the top 10 in the nation in their respective weight classes and really nobody ranks lower than seven look at higgins he's in again he's, he's trying to come behind him to score there it is he takes him down for two more so he's ahead right now eight to three a minute 14 seconds to go this could be a major upset for oklahoma get him right back in the dual meet there's an escape for scope nine to four or eight to four a minute to go now second period action at 142, Darren Higgins of Oklahoma has been very impressive so far. The man you're looking at, Luce Scove, got an escape point a moment ago, but he's down 8-4 at this point, and he's had his hands full with this freshman out of MacArthur High School in Lawton. Luke Scove out of New nice. Jersey. He's got to get behind that arm, though. See, Higgins had that arm in there blocking him from making that double. Made a nice shot, but he didn't clear the arm out of there. Dave, I guess the people that may be watching at home that are not steeped in wrestling knowledge 
would be amazed to know how much technique there is in this sport when things are seemingly just crazy out there and you're just going at each other full tilt. There is still so much skill and technique involved. That's right. It's like any sport. They spend hours and hours working out. It doesn't look like a lot of moves when you're out there, but in wrestling, there's so much positioning. You just don't want to get out of position and uh, keeping your body in the right place at the right time, along with the good moves. You didn't see it. It was off the screen right there, but Higgins was warned for stalling. There's a takedown. That makes the score eight to seven. Scove's either got to turn him, turn him loose and try to get another takedown or try to turn him over. There's no riding time at this point. Second period. So we've still got one ahead. Five seconds remaining. It looks like Higgins is going to be the winner. He's not going to be able to score any points. A big upset right there. Well, we should have a period remaining, shouldn't we, Dave? Oh, wait. We still have one period left. So I was getting I ahead of myself. Well, I, I don't blame you for being fooled. There's so much scoring, you would think it would be three periods. But, you know, I noticed one thing about Darren Higgins here at the end. He looked a little bit tired after that takedown. He he kind of looked over to the bench and really looked winded at that point. And as he walks around right now behind Luke Scove, we'll see if the sophomore against the freshman, if there's an experience factor here in the third period, because this is like the fourth quarter in football, where things really pay off from a conditioning and a mental standpoint. That's right, and you can really tire yourself out the day before the match just worrying about it in a situation like this. Luke Scove trying to fight off an upset. And you know, no matter how this one turns out, you got to give a lot of credit to Higgins because he's really been impressive. I really got ahead of myself there. I guess I'm getting too caught up in this match. I thought the thing was over. <laughs> hey, when you see 8-7, I don't blame you. I couldn't believe it. I was, it was an upset to me, even though he's been this close already. Well, it may still turn out that way. One thing to keep in mind, Darren Higgins is riding 50 seconds of advantage time right now. There's the escape. The advantage stop, clock stops at 54. So we've got a minute up. and a half left in this match, and it's a barn burner at 8-2-8. Eight eight. That's right. At this point, it's just a new match. There's no riding time. There's plenty of wrestling time, a minute and a half to go. It's just whoever scores the most points now is going to win it. I would imagine those are Lukes coming from the crowd and not boos. Yeah, that's true. They have to be happy with what their sophomore's doing right now. Is that going to be a stalling point there, Dave? That's right. Now, we didn't see the first stall warning. It was off the mat. We didn't pick it up on camera. I told you about it. And this is the second warning, so that's one point. At this, at this situation right here, see, that really is crucial because now Luke Scope takes a 9-8 lead. And that may be some of that tiredness and that conditioning I was talking about at the end of the second period. He just was not prepared physically to get after his opponent at that time. And when he stalled, it cost him a point. 9-8, Luke Scove. We've got 50 seconds left in the third quarter of this most entertaining match. Well, there's no question that Higgins is tiring a little. you got to give a lot of credit to Luke Scove. He was down three points in this match, and, and Higgins looked good, and he's fought back, and he's really looks... It was 8-4 really at one point, Dave. That even makes it a you know, better comeback. I tell you, that's, that's hard in wrestling, and they shorten the matches up. Don't count Higgins out, though. He's still fighting back. We'll see how much the freshman has left with 20 seconds left. Boy, they both look tired, don't they? And there you see a warning against Luke Scove. That ties it at 9-9. OSU bench not happy. Oh, he's Here we tight. go. Five seconds left. He got, he got him! And he pinned it! He pinned it! Unbelievable! Unbelievable, Max! Holy Max, unbelievable! What a last second turnaround by Luke Scove of OSU. The Cowboys get a pin. They will have a good the Oklahoma Sooners have had happen to them the worst possible thing that can happen when you're wrestling in Gallagher Hall. A here last see. second pin, Dave Martin. Well, look at this. You see Luke Scove. The score is 9-9. Nine nine. He's, he's got to get a takedown. They're flopping around there. He gets the takedown. And not only the takedown, but just in the last seconds, scores a fall. That's got to be one of the most unbelievable finishes I've ever seen in a match. 15-9, the decision to Luke Scove over Darren Higgins. OSU leads it 15-3. The son of the coach, Darren Abel for Oklahoma.
Boy, Dave, you know what really makes this tough now for the Sooners? Abel has to wrestle against the number one wrestler in the nation in this weight class, Kenny Monday out of Washington High School in Tulsa. They have really got an uphill battle now after that disappointing result. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, the thing that, I mean, you even saw the officials down here in front of us asking, well, was that a fall? It just happened so quickly. I mean, we're looking at the wrestlers starting with eight seconds to go. They're starting from their feet, and the score is tied nine to nine. I mean, Luke Scove has got to score points to even win the match. He gets in there, you saw that double leg, and it looks like he had a takedown, then it saw Higgins was going to get on top. Not only did Luke get the takedown, but he laid right on his back there. I don't even know if he realized it, and the referee called a fall. I mean, that went from a, here I was given the win away at the end of the second period by mistake, and then Luke Scove comes back, and just in the last seconds, not only gets a takedown, but secures a fall. That's a big difference on the team score. Sure is. That makes it Oklahoma State 15 to three, well, where- it's about a nine point swing, Dave. Instead of Oklahoma getting three, they get nothing, and Oklahoma State gets six. So you're talking about a differential of nine points right there. So instead of nine, six, it's 15, three. And that's a tremendous turnaround, especially considering as you see Kenny Monday get a takedown for two points. In the next three matches, including this one, Oklahoma State has two number one rated wrestlers and a number two rated wrestler. Boy, the Sooners have their work cut out for them now. That's right, we can hardly get done talking about the action in the match before. Here you see Kenny, I watch him shooting his head. He's got a little fireman's carry, tips him right there. Now he was trying to catch him, hold him on his back, but he lost his, lost his hold there on the head and arm. Kenny Monday, second in the nation his last two years. Outstanding wrestler in the Big 8 last year. Big 8 champion the last two years. Bob, he's definitely the class of the field at 150. Last week when he wrestled Kistler from Iowa to 11 to 8 decision, that's the only really close match he's had, and, and he really dominated that until he got tired late in the match. Uh, he's trying for a fall here, I'll tell you. He's got a half Nelson bar arm. Trying to get those shoulders rolled over. If he would get a fall right here, it would really hurt OU's chances in the dual meet. I mean, they they thought they were going to get back in the match right there, um, and it looked to me like they were. I tell you, I, I was really impressed by Higgins up until the last couple seconds wrestling a great match. I really think he tired out, Dave, in that third. It looked like at the end of the second period, he was really tired, and I think that carried over into the final three minutes. It sure did. And here, Kenny Monday, now he did pin Darren Abel in a minute and 14 seconds in the first dual meet. So you see Kenny, he's got the arm bar, and he's trying to get the half in there, but he's not been able at all to turn, uh, Ab hasn't been able to turn Abel at right. this point. Abel is 20 and nine this year, 51, 29 and one career, but he's never won a match against OSU. He's 0-3 and one. Kenny Monday, 25 and zero this year. Will anybody beat him? I don't know. 113, 11 and two in his career. He's won seven of 10 against Oklahoma with one tie, seven, two and one. Well, I don't think anybody will beat him unless it's a major upset. OSU has two wrestlers in Mike Sheets and Kenny Money that are the class of their field, and it would be a major upset to even one of them beat him. Dave Martin, you don't see too many wrestlers. Well, it's obviously that, obviously Darren Abel has lost his headgear here. He'll get it back from the referee here. Well, it's gotta be tough when you're wrestling a guy like Kenny Monday and you have no protection. And you're watching, you're looking at the clock with a minute 46 of advantage time. Only 32 seconds left here in the first period. Well, he hasn't got a lot to look forward to in, in defense of Darren. You know, it's always hard to come in and wrestle at Gallagher Hall. And then the fact that your father is the coach, it even makes it harder. And, and over the, the years, he's wrestled some great wrestlers at, at OSU at his weight. I mean, he's a good wrestler. You look at his record this year, uh, he's won 20 matches and only lost nine for OU. He's, he's had a good career, but, but it's always been tough against OU because he's always had tough guys to go against. The thing you have to watch for with Kenny Monday is he's got that explosiveness we were talking about earlier with Clint Burke. Uh, he's just got that capability of one quick move, take a man right from his feet right to his back, and that's why he has so many falls on the year. He's, he's got the overall career pinning record for Oklahoma State, and he's within two or three of get the single season record, but he has that capacity to score big points in a short amount of time. Kenny Monday must be glad that Nate Carr of Iowa State's finally graduated because Carr has beaten Kenny in the last two NCAA finals, one in overtime, very frustrating, and as Dave Martin alluded to earlier, Kenny Monday of OSU, obviously the class of the country at 150 right now. That's the end of the first period. Kenny Monday, 2-1 at this point. 
Oklahoma State leads it in team points 15 to 3 after the first four matchups. Two of them pins. Yeah, I don't think if you ever would have thought how this match would go before it started, I would have not guessed that we'd had two falls in the first four matches. I, they were both exciting. It just happened, boy, things happen quickly in college wrestling. And you go from a tie match to a fall in like four seconds time is unbelievable. I would have put money on that last match with 10 seconds remaining that we wouldn't have had a pin and would have lost that money four seconds later. Same thing we saw happen against Iowa University last week. We saw the match with John Smith decided in the last four seconds. We saw the match decided at uh, 158 pounds with Bill Dyke in the last three or four seconds. So until it's over, the old saying, it's never over till it's over. In college wrestling with these big matchups, it couldn't be more true. Kenny Monday, tremendous upper body strength. He's got that long strength and he's got that unbelievable leverage. See him use a cradle a lot. That's what he's trying to hook up on Darren Abel there. Because he's got that length. He does it, and Carl Lyons do it. He does the same thing. I mean, he tries to hook up a cradle because their length of the arms is so long, you can be coming up to your feet and get caught in a cradle. Two and a half minutes of riding time at this point for Kenny Monday. There you see the referee giving a, a point of stalling on Darren Abel. That's one point more to Kenny Monday. See, he warned him right at the end of the first period. Minutes at There's a stall left point in the to second Monday. period. So it's 3-1 Kenny Monday at this point. Kenny Monday just kind of like a, a surgeon out there working on Darren Abel right now. Darren hasn't been able to do much except somehow try to ride out the time. Kenny Monday, two minutes and 40, 36 seconds of advantage time at this point. Only has to get over a minute for one point. So basically, he's ahead. Well, the thing Darren's got to watch for in a situation like this is he really can't open up a lot because Kenny's got that capability of just scoring big points in a short amount of time. So if he gets, if he really opens up and gets in there and really wrestles with Kenny, he's liable to get caught on his back. And that's what happened to him in the first duel. I mean, just only a minute going in the match, he got caught and pinned all in one quick move. So. He's trying to wrestle conservatively at the same time he's trying to be offensive, and that's hard to do when you wrestle somebody like, like Kenny Monday. Dave, as far as moving up a class, which Darren Abel did from 142 last year to 150 this year, he replaces Roger Frizzell of OU at that weight. Besides the obvious, uh, I guess you need greater strength at that weight, what are some of the psychological things that come into play when you suddenly find yourself wrestling people that are bigger and stronger? Well, it's, it's tough enough wrestling a guy that's your own size. And I, Kenny Monday is a big 150-pounder. He cuts a lot of weight to get down there. There he is. Look at him. Look how quick he gets in on that leg. That's that explosive that we were talking about. Two points. Now, Abel comes right back out, though, and gets one. For an escape. 30 seconds to go in this period. 6-3 Monday, second seconds. period. And back to what we were talking about in the size, Bob. It's just... You know, it's, it's so hard to cope with it anyway because Monday is strong and he's, he's got everything you need and he's big. Darren Abel obviously is not a real big 150 pounder. He doesn't have to cut a lot of weight to make that. Yeah, so it I'm, does make a difference. Although in wrestling, in the workout room, you wrestle a lot of times with people bigger than you. So, I mean, they're used to it. It's just that you don't mind wrestling a bigger guy, but you don't want him to be as good as Kenny Monday. <laughs> there you see how that quickness again, he gets in, kind of a little duck into a double. He's got it all, really. Stan Abel on the bench complaining to some of the OU wrestlers about some of the scoring there as Kenny Monday leads at 8-3 now after two periods of play. And we will go to the third now. Oklahoma State figured to get at least three at this weight. Kenny Monday would love to get his team a pin and make it 21-3. Well, the thing he's got to consider right here is there's also major and superior dis decision points. Now, if you beat your man by more than eight points, right now Kenny's ahead by five. He's got two minutes and 50 seconds riding time, so he's really ahead by six. If he beats Darren Abel by eight or more points, eight to 11, that gives you an additional team point. So instead of the regular three, you get four. If you can beat your guy by 12 or more decision, you know, by 12 or more points, that would be five team points in a fall or a forfeit or a disqualification is 16 points. So if Monday can't pin him, he's got to look at those major superior points. Kenny Monday gets two. Two more. It's 10-3 now. 
Because now he's in that situation, Bob, where he, with riding time, he's an eight points ahead. So he's in the, uh, the bonus point situation there where he can get 14 points if the match would end right here. There is no way that he cannot get that advantage time now, even if Darren Abel would ride him the rest of the way. Only a minute 15 left in the period. 2.51 of riding time at this point. There you see Coach Abel giving his son as much help as he can. I tell you, even if Stan could get out there and wrestle for him himself, it'd be close. Stan was a two-time national champion. But it would have been tough even with a guy like Kenny Bundy because he's got so much going for him. Kenny is hungry for a national championship after coming so close the last two years. Senior from Washington High School in Tulsa. That's right, and in talking to Kenny, he's, he's even saying at this point, hey, I'm more interested in the national championship than any of these win records or pin records. He said, I, I want to win the national championship. That's the one everybody's going to remember. Darren Abel got an escape point there, so it's 10-4 and 11-4, counting the advantage time. So Kenny Monday, for a superior decision, needs to pick up another point somewhere. That's right, and Darren got right back in on a nice single leg. Wasn't able to complete it there, though. Darren Abel hanging tough here in the third period against the number one man in the nation at 150. Speaking of number one, Stan Abel now will talk to his son, Darren. Good crowd on Hannah Gallagher Hall tonight. Not too many empty seats. The place is just about filled to the rafters. Oklahoma State has been awfully difficult to beat here. 43-9-1 against the Sooners over the years. They beat Oklahoma in Norman, 27-13 on December 9th. 81-19-6, the Oklahoma State series lead in 106 meetings. This is the 107. Well, as you mentioned earlier, this is a situation where for Kenny Money to get those major points, he's going to have to score points here. Now, there you see the referee. He called Darren Abel for stalling. Now, this is the, he warned him once. This is the third time he's been penalized, so that was two points. So that puts Monday right back into the major win position, ahead 12 to 4 on the scoreboard with riding time. So, so the third time you're 13. penalized, that's right, that's two points then. The next time is a disqualification. Basically, 13 to 4 now with only 15 seconds remaining. That's right, you got to make sure that you get over there and wrestle because if you're disqualified, that's 16 points. Little slip there by Darren. Under 10 seconds remaining now. There you see a takedown. Two more for Kenny. It's 14 to 4. A pretty workmanlike performance by the number one wrestler in the nation at 150. Kenny Monday takes Darren Abel 15 to 4, including that riding time. So the OSU Cowboys pick up a bunch more points. They have a big lead now as we look ahead to 158 coming up. Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. Action and wrestling on Tulsa Cable Sports. You're like me. You like to read the daily. Two victory puts the Cowboys on top of the Sooners, 19 to three. As we head to 158, Dave Martin. That's right. We've got a big matchup right here with Johnny Johnson, 17, five and one on the year, a sophomore from Midwest City, against uh, Bill Dykeman, currently ranked number two in the nation. He's 27, three and two on the year. Now they've met earlier in the season in the first Bedlam match, and uh, the winner at that time was in fact Johnny Johnson. Johnny Johnson of Oklahoma, 17, five and one, 39, 14 and two, two and one against Oklahoma State. Bill Dykeman, the junior, Jersey City, Jersey, 27, three and two. That's his career record. One and one against Oklahoma. He is the number two man in the nation. Johnson, number seven right now, and Dykeman, of course, an All-American. Well, as you saw last week on TV in the Iowa match, Dykeman went right down to the last two seconds with the defending national champion and a winner of 80-some straight matches, uh, Zaleski of Iowa. So I'm go down and, and was tied with like four seconds to go, only get taken down and lose. You see Dykeman's record, 27-3-2, and two, an outstanding year for him. Uh, he's a transfer wrestler, re wrestled his freshman year at Louisiana State University, has transferred to Oklahoma State. Uh, he's got this year and next year uh, competition-wise. 
But that just shows you how close these wrestlers are with the number one wrestler in that weight. Dykeman goes right down to the last seconds. Uh, in the last dual meet, Johnny Johnson defeated Billy Dykeman. So this match right here is another great matchup. Really, we've only had one match uh, tonight that was kind of one-sided. That was the 150-pound match where Kenny Monday won 15 to four. But a lot of people expected Oklahoma State to get a fall there. Darren Abel did a good job of staying in the match. Johnny Johnson was considered the nation's number one recruit when he came to Oklahoma a couple of years ago out of Midwest City, suburb of Oak City. State champion there. Well, there's no question. Any coach would like to have either one of these guys at 158 pounder. Talking to the OU coaches that John Johnson has been coming on real strong late in the year, as has Bill Dykeman for Oklahoma State. And you see Dykeman in, in deep on the single leg, but wasn't able to finish it up. Good quickness there by Johnny Johnson to escape. No scoring as of yet, no advantage time registered. We're halfway through the first period. Looking at the st team score at this point, I'd have to say that there's no question there you see Johnny Johnson's season record, 17-5-1, and, and also his career record. I'd have to say there... Oklahoma University is going to have to really have some upsets here. I, I just don't feel at this point they can win the dual meet. They're down 19 to 3. You got Oklahoma State highly favored at, at 167 pounds with Mike Sheets, highly favored at 190 with Carl Lyons. Unless there's just some major, major upsets, I don't think that the Sooners can come on and win the duel. I would say, though, that I've been impressed with their showing. Overall, it's been a much better dual meet at Stillwater than the first meet was down at OU. Even though the Cowboys won down there, I thought both teams looked very defensive down there, and pretty sluggish, although it was an early meet in December. But tonight, there's more action from both teams. There's been a lot of exciting wrestlers wrestling, and uh, just like you said, that one quick move in the last five seconds turned the whole dual meet around Boy, uh, sure team score-wise with Luke Scove getting the fall right in the last two seconds against Darren Higgins. At 142, what a turning point that was. And as we mentioned, a possible nine-point swing there with Oklahoma State grabbing six for the pin and Oklahoma obviously losing three for what could have been a decision. No scoring here. We've got 20 seconds left in the first period. Bill Dykeman in the orange of OSU, Johnny Johnson in the red for Oklahoma. This is another match similar to the Clint Burke and Claire Anderson match. I don't, I don't look for a lot of scoring. There you see the referee given a double warning. Each wrestler is warned for stalling. Once again, we're only 11 seconds from the end of the first period. They have to have a warning someplace, and he gave the warning to both wrestlers. David Kincaid, the referee. Tough task for one man to come into Gallagher Hall and officiate an Oklahoma State-Oklahoma Bedlam match. That's the end of the first period of play. That's no advantage time and no scoring so far. And that, I agree with you. It's tough any time to referee in Gallagher Hall. And David Kincaid does a fine job. He did a good job last week against the Iowa Hawkeyes. And he's done a good job in several of these Oklahoma University and Oklahoma State dual mix. There you see Stan Abel looking on. I'm sure he is a little concerned. Look at him right there. You're down 19 to 3, and you've got a couple of Oklahoma State's top wrestlers ahead. So things don't look real well you know, for the Sooners at this point. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Oklahoma had a lot of question marks in the heavyweight area early in the season. Looks like we have an escape point there for Oklahoma State. I imagine we'll see most of this match take place on the feet. You see Dykeman in again as he was earlier, deep on a single. The question is, can he finish it up? And again, he's not able to. John Johnson's a very good defensive wrestler, as you can see. Good deep shots. The penetration's good with, with uh, Bill Dykeman. He's not able to finish it up. Now, one thing that you'll see Bill Dykeman do differently than most wrestlers, he has a tendency when he shoots his single leg, he gets his head to the outside. Now, when you're... There you see Coach Chesbro yelling some instructions to him, but Bill Dykeman shoots that head to the outside. When we have most wrestlers, we teach to shoot the head to the inside of the leg we're talking about on a single leg, and... Uh, Bill does that, gets it to the outside, but he tries to elevate the legs off the mat earlier. That's how he gets away with, with using that, what I would call a, a unique situation, the way he does his single leg. And he's been successful at it over a period of years, but when he gets against these top wrestlers like Zaleski from Iowa and Johnny Johnson, it's harder to complete a good single leg unless you keep that, that hit on the inside, and you're seeing that happen to him. 
One minute left, second period. See that Only counter move right so there. Far. That's two points takedown. Nice counter move. Dykeman shot in. Again, he kind of shoots that head to the outside. When he shoots to the outside, that was a situation where John Johnson just, what we call, posted him. He just pops his head to the side, spun around behind him. Once that hands and weight touches the mat, that's a takedown. So that makes it two to one with 50 seconds, 56 seconds to go in the second period. Good counter wrestling. The evenness of this match indicated not only by the score, but only five seconds of advantage time for Oklahoma's Jimmy, rather Johnny Johnson at this point. There, nice there he got it. Boy, beautiful escape, and then a reversal there, and Oklahoma State, big points. That was a situation where they just gave reversal. You heard that buzzer right there, and that's what Bob Dillinger, here you see it, he was asking. Now watch, you see Dykeman, he kind of posts his head on the mat. Now he's trying to spin out here and go the other way, but he comes right around behind. Johnny Johnson didn't let loose of him there. He came right around behind for a reversal, so there, there was no one-point escape. It just was a two-point reversal. And right away, John Johnson's out. They haven't blown the whistle here. Good quickness. Boy, great quickness there by Johnson. And then he said to Dykeman, come on. Well, you have to watch that. You can't stop wrestling on the edge. We saw that last week against Iowa University with a heavyweight turn to walk back to the middle. Perry Coffin just tackled him from behind. So you never stop in wrestling until you hear that whistle. 3-3, three, three, 20 seconds left, second period. Oklahoma State in team points. Way ahead right now at 19-3 because of a couple of pins. Mark Perry at 118 and Luke Scove at 142. Been a little more action than I expected in this match. 3-3 deadlock with a period to go. I thought it might just go down to the very last second in a quick takedown, but, but they're mixing up pretty well right here. As you said earlier, there's only seven seconds riding time to either wrestler, so that hasn't been a factor at this point. Dykeman's going to try to ride him a little bit, but I would say the match will probably take place most on his feet. Johnson's up to his feet right away, but Dykeman's got his hands locked around him. You see the referee off to the side, you can't see, but he's saying you got to take him down to the mat. That's what he's indicating right there. He's counting off the seconds. You either have to take him to the mat or it's a warning for stalling. Well, he called it a stalemate in this position. Now, that that was a good call for Bill Dyke. I thought there, and you see on the side, I see Coach Stan Abel kind of shaking his hands in disbelief. And I'll have to agree in that situation. Generally, you don't see that call a stalemate. When he's counting out the seconds, so you have to take the man down the mat. And if you don't, then they call it stalling, not a stalemate. John Johnson kind of indicated to the referee when he went off the side right there, he's, he's saying he's pushing me off the mat. I think if it happens again, you see the referee counting again. No, he got the escape. 4-3, Johnny Johnson of Oklahoma now. Down to a minute 20 left in the third period. Now you're going to see Dykeman have to get on the offense to get back in the match because John Johnson doesn't have to get a takedown to win. Remember now, both wrestlers have a warning on them. So the, if, if a warning goes to either one at this point, it'll cost him a point. So Johnny Johnson cannot afford to back up here because if he doesn't, he could be called for stalling and that could tie the match up. There you see Dykeman again trying to shoot that single leg to the outside. Oh, nice counter move again by John Johnson. Big takedown for Johnny there. 6-3 Oklahoma now in the last 45 seconds of the third period. Now he's got to come off those legs. Like he can't just hook on that leg. And the referee whistled off. lot. So that's the thing about what we talked about earlier in college wrestling we're seeing. Not a lot of move, continuous move, but one quick one. And that was Dykeman's shot in. Not a real good shot. Nice counter wrestling by Johnny Johnson. He's got command of this match with 39 seconds to go. Riding time's not really a factor. Dykeman's got to get out, a quick escape, and then try to get a takedown to tie it back up. Only one Oklahoma winner so far tonight. Clint Burke, one nothing over Claire Anderson at 134. That got the Sooners back to 9-3, but since then, 
They have not been close at all. 15-3 and then 19-3. On pins by Luke Scove and a superior Kenny Monday decision. Johnson's riding him for all he can right here because when the time's ticking off, there's not much left. You see Dykeman kind of turning, trying to get off the mat. 19 seconds left. Generally, we would say, or normally we would say, it looks like he's got it in the bag, but the way that these matches have been going lately. We learned our lesson earlier, didn't we, Dave? That's right. There could be a fall. There could be lots of points scored in just these last 19 seconds. Boy, and Oklahoma has to win this one with Mike Sheets of Oklahoma State coming up next. Well, that's you just a pretty cannot tall count. Order there. You can't count on upsetting him. You hope for it, but. Dykeman. There's the got escape. an escape. It's still 6-4 Oklahoma, though. Dykeman's got to gamble and go for it here in the last 10 seconds. Well, Hurt his left elbow. Injury. A little injury timeout right there. Jeff Fair, the OSU uh, trainer, will take a look at him. In addition to the wrestling we've been telling you about coming up the rest of this week, Thursday and Friday, the state high school tournament. At the other end, Stan Abel talking to his wrestler, Johnny Johnson. Like Johnson came in ranked number seven in the nation. Bill Dykeman, number two, All-American, transferred from LSU. Stan Abel, though, happy with the way this match is going, but very concerned at the overall situation with the duel as it stands right now. You know, talking to the Oklahoma coaches before the match, they felt confident they could win this match. They thought John Johnson, even though he's ranked um, seventh, they thought he could beat Bill Dykeman. You see Bill looking at the clock again there. That's the end right there. Good decision for Johnny Johnson of Oklahoma, six to four. He becomes the second Oklahoma wrestler tonight to register a victory. That'll get the Sooners back to within 13 team points. Oklahoma State, 19 to six. Johnny Johnson now three and one against Oklahoma State in his career. Bill Dykeman now one and two against Oklahoma in his. We'll have more from Gallagher Hall and Stillwater in a moment. Coming up, Mike Sheets, number one at 167. Oklahoma State 19, Oklahoma 6. As we go to 167, they're going to start very quickly on us here, so we'll sneak in our information on Melvin Douglas of Oklahoma on your right. Mike Sheets, senior Tahlequah, OSU on the left, number one in the nation. Douglas, number three at this point. He is 27, 5, and 1. 60, 17 and 3 career, but he's never beaten an OSU wrestler. He's 0 and 4 against the Pokes. Sheets of Tahlequah, 30 and 0 this year, 114 and 12 career, 6 and 3 against Oklahoma. One thing you have to mention here: the only only Oklahoma Stater that Melvin Douglas has ever had the chance to wrestle is Mike Sheets. He's lost to him four times. That's a good reason to be 0 and 4, isn't that's, it? That's that's right. As you can see from the national tournament last year, Mike Sheets was 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 voted the most valuable wrestler in the national tournament at Oklahoma City. And he's in the class of his own right here at 167, but you're seeing the wrestler that gives him more trouble probably than anyone else, and that's Melvin Douglas. First Oklahoman in 20 years to receive that award was Mike Sheets. Was not taken down once during that entire NCAA championship meet. And Melvin Douglas has given Mike some close matches, five to two in the duel earlier this year. 4-2 in the first duel they wrestled and then lost to Sheets 9-2 and 9-5 in, in other matches. Well, I tell you, I, I don't think there are many wrestlers, Dave, that have gone through an entire season only being taken down five times and going 36-0. That is an unbelievable performance. I don't care if you're wrestling your little sister. She's going to take you down five times over nine months or so. Well, the thing that's gotten <laughs> Mike in the position to w win so many matches as he has done is that he doesn't make very many mistakes. He always keeps in good position. Very seldom does he get taken to his back or get, taken or, or get any offensive points scored against him. He, Boy. again, has got that explosiveness that we talk about, tremendous balance, and he's, he's a great mat wrestler. You'll see him later in the match, and he, he gets a guy down, and he gets the legs on him and rides him and turns him over. And he's, I mean, it's, it really is frustrating to the other wrestlers because he just can't get away from him. We've seen Sheets in the last just few weeks. We saw him wrestle Sylvester Carver from San Jose, who at that time was ranked number two in the nation. We saw him pin him. Last week, we saw him wrestle Kistler from Iowa, who at that time was ranked number two. We saw him decision him soundly five to nothing. Tonight, we see him against the number three ranked wrestler, Melvin Douglas. Mike Sheets just has that capability of um, rising to the occasion. He wrestles better as the competition gets tougher.
167. We're at seventh match of the evening. Coming up, 177, 190 in the heavyweights. We've got 28 seconds left in the first period. No scores registered yet. And no advantage time. An indication of how close this one has been so far. Very standing up type matchup so far. You can see Douglas is having a fine year this year. Look for some big things from him next year when Mike Sheets is out. Even this year, he, I look for him to be an All-American. He's got the capabilities of scoring right up there in the top four or five in the weight. Well, you right. don't hear much about Kansas wrestling, Dave. Melvin Douglas, a junior out of Topeka. He certainly has made a name for himself. That's right, he really has. And just to be able to stay in the match with Mike Sheets. And, and it could be a very close match. I've seen him wrestle in the Big 8 match last year, went right down to the very end. I mean, it's it's been close. Did we get a warning there against Douglas? Yeah, that was, like I say again, they're right before the end of the period. The warning went against Melvin Douglas. There you see, look at that outstanding record. 30 and zero this year, but look at the career wins. 114 and only 12 losses. Both Mike Sheets and Kenny Mundy, who wrestled earlier, are closing in on Ricky Stewart's uh, most career wins, 118. Both of them will surpass it by the end of the year. Just be probably whoever has the most matches in the national tournament. Once in a while, you'll wrestle an extra match, depending on how many are in your weight. One of those two will end up with the most wins. Either one of them would probably trade the most wins for another NCAA championship, though. That's the bottom line. Kenny Monday could tell you that because he certainly still feels unfulfilled at 150, having never won it. This year, he's the odds-on favorite after registering a sparkling 15-4 to four decision, a major decision or superior decision over Darren Abel tonight. Oklahoma State, 19-6 to six at this point. Johnny Johnson at 158 came back and beat Bill Dykeman at 158 for Oklahoma after that Kenny Monday victory. So the Sooners are not out of it yet. Melvin Douglas doing a good job of getting up to his feet, but Mike's doing just as good a job of uh, breaking him back down and controlling him. Like I say, Mike Sheets is just hard to get away from. You know, one thing the other night, I was at the Headliner Banquet in Oklahoma City, Bob, and I was really uh, impressed with the number of fine athletes that the state of Oklahoma has, not just in wrestling, but it, I mean, every sport, it's amazing on the national level, the type of athletes Oklahoma, and I think that's a compliment to all the coaches in the, in the colleges and the high schools here in the state, but amazing on a national scene for the state with not that much population, not that many schools always competing, but, but we seem to be able to compete on a national level in lots of sports. Right here, Mike Sheets was one of the people that was honored that night. They're calling Wayman Tisdale the greatest basketball player in the, in the United States right now. And, and we've got the greatest cowboy in the United States in Roy Cooper. I mean, and it just the list goes on and on. And, and I don't think people sometimes realize how good Oklahoma really is as a state in so many sports. Look at football again. It's unbelievable. They're excited about it here in Stillwater on the heels of that Blue Bonnet Bowl victory. Very close Sheets. there, Kenny. Rather, Mike Sheets came very close there to getting a couple, but he just ran out of space. We've got a minute or two left in the second period. Kenny, or rather, Mike has racked up now 57 seconds in riding time. That's the thing that he's tough on. You just, he just cannot get away from Mike Sheets. It's not saying anything bad against Melvin Douglas. I mean, he's doing a good job of popping back up to his feet. He's keeping his position. He's trying, but the Sheets is just really hard to get away from. I think I'd be very happy to be scoreless with Mike Sheets with a minute left in the second period. Basically, Sheets, though, with a 1-0 lead, as he has racked up better than a minute 10 now in advantage time, or riding time. 42 seconds left. This emphasizes, again, the thing we talked about before, but in collegiate wrestling, anytime you're just 0 0 one, zero, one quick move, a reversal, something with back points in there, that can that can nail down the match for you right there. So you just cannot make mistakes, and that's why Mike Sheets has rolled up the record he has. Very seldom is he put in a position of being on his back, because it's hard. They shorten the matches from what they used to be. 
it used to be nine minutes, then they went to eight minutes, and now down to seven minutes. And in that short of time, you, if you make one mistake, you just can't come back. He just he can't get very um, offensive in trying to turn or do things to Melvin Douglas because if he loses him here, gets an escape or a reversal point, it's hard to come back. And we're only 10 seconds to go in the second period, and it's still scoreless, even though he's racked up about two minutes riding time. Melvin Douglas got it back to his feet. Two minutes, well, let's call it 1.59 in riding time for Mike Cheats after the second period. Two minutes remaining now, but Melvin Douglas, except for the advantage time, very much in this matchup. We're at 167. Melvin Douglas of Oklahoma. Mike Sheets of Oklahoma State got a point for an escape. 2 nothing now. Counting the advantage time. That's right. Well, we really can't count those until the end of the match. But like you say, in this situation, since they're on their feet, the chances are that that one point will stand up. So Melvin Douglas is going to have to get offensive. We see Sheets right in there on his leg now. It's close to the edge. Mike's trying to pull him back in the middle. Melvin Douglas trying to get off the mat there. It's hard to score on the edge because you can't keep the man supporting points on the ball, on the ball, uh, wrestling mat. There you see, he's got it up in the air, making the trip. Ooh. Douglas has still got that ha uh, whizzer in there, so there's no points at this point. Mike just couldn't get see, that right arm loose. Shot. That arm in there, that's what's keeping the referee from giving any points. He's watching to see if Mike steps out of bounds and he pulls him back in the middle. <laughs> Looking for that time to trip. There, there he goes. He just, he just dropped him off there. Looked like Melvin Douglas, after defending so well for so long, Dave finally kind of tired out and went down on his own. Well, it looked like he was trying to make a little trip back that you see some wrestlers do. We saw John Smith do it in an earlier match, but it didn't work on Mike Sheets. Now if you're going to see Mike try to get back points, he can loosen up a little. Like you say, he's, he's got that one point riding nailed down, 38 seconds to go. You're going to see him probably try to tip him for some back points. He leads it 4 nothing, counting those points at this time. And if he can somehow get a couple of takedowns, he could get a superior decision. He's going to have trouble. Not much well time to Douglas do it, though. wrestling tonight. I don't think that he can get a major. Well, if Douglas would do that move on the mat, he could because he... He tried to slide out from, in, from underneath Mike and he got caught in his back, but his shoulders were out of bounds, so there's no back point scored. And this is the last duel meet a lot of these seniors for Oklahoma State. Clary Anderson, Mike Sheets, Carl Lyons, Kenny Monday, uh, Alan Locker. This is the last duel meet they're going to see here at Oklahoma State, and they're going to really miss these five guys next year. Not to mention these fans. Hey, it's got to be a unique experience, Dave, because when you're out there, that seven minutes is yours and yours alone. It's you against your opponent for everybody to see. There is no place to hide. That's right. That's one of the hard things about wrestling. Ten seconds remaining. Mike Sheets coasting home here with the advantage time. Leads it 4 nothing. Looks like he'll settle for that decision. Very good performance by the number one rated wrestler in the nation at 167. Mike Sheets, as usual, not taken down. He wins it 4 nothing over Melvin Douglas of Oklahoma. We've got the big boys coming up at 177 in heavyweights. That's next from Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. decision. OSU now 22 and 6. And we go to 177 for Oklahoma. Dan Chata, sophomore, San Jose, California. 34 and 4 this year. Oklahoma State, Alan Lochner, a senior of Fenita. 14, 12, and 3 as we go into 177. Your thoughts on this matchup, Dave Martin? This is a match where Dan Chate is a heavy favorite. Looking at his record, 34 and 4. He's one of the best wrestlers. He's currently ranked number 4 in the nation in his weight. Alan Lochner is not ranked. He's 14, 12, and 3 on the year. So this is a match where Oklahoma University is definitely the favorite. Dan Shade looks taller than the six feet it is listed in the press guide. But he's a good size 177 pounder. As you know, he wrestled last year uh, against 
Carl Lyons a couple times during the year at 190. So he's pretty good size when he gets down to 177. Boy, when you can wrestle at both of those weights, you're talking about a 13-pound differential there as opposed to an 8-pound differential in the lower classes, and that is a big, big difference. Dan Chade is outstanding in his weight and only young. He's just a sophomore from San Jose, and I know Coach Abel's really looking for some big things for him in the next two or three years. This year, he should be an All-American in that weight. If he performs well in the national tournament, he can be right in there. 64 and 11 career. He's won three of five against OSU wrestlers. Alan Lochner from the Cowboys, 35, 26 and two career. He's a senior out of Anita. 0 and four though against Oklahoma. He has not experienced much success against the Sooners. And just as I say that, he gets a two point takedown. That was a pretty good move. And now, Mr. Jade comes back very strong himself. Now that was a situation, Bob, I think was a pretty quick call by the referee. We're going to see that on the replay. Now, now look at this. Jade shoots in. Now, Allen posts him, comes behind. Now, he's still got that arm, but the referee goes ahead and gives him two. Jade just comes around behind him for, at that point, a reversal. So it could have been just two points for Jade, but it was a, a pretty quick call, and it's two and two at this point. We say he's a heavy favorite because in the first match, uh, Dan Chade did the superior decision to unlock the 14 to one. So if OU is gonna pick up some additional team points, here's the match they think they're gonna do it on. See Chade trying to put the legs in, jump up there and throw a half Nelson, see if he can't turn him over. Oklahoma State, 22 to six. Only two Oklahoma winners tonight, Johnny Johnson at 158, Clint Burke at 134. Other than that, it's been an orange power evening here at Gallagher Hall. The most stunning match of the night, Luke Scova, sophomore pinning freshman Darren Higgins of Oklahoma with only six seconds remaining in the third period for a 15-9 decision that really turned things around and opened up a 15-3, 12-point lead for Oklahoma State. Well, the thing that, that's one of those matches you'll see in the paper, uh, Skull Falls 659, happened with one second to go, and, and you'll sit there and say, well, I guess that wasn't a very good match, but you had to see it to believe that it was, it was tied up, and they were on their feet with about seven or eight seconds to go, and it got a takedown to fall all in that much time, so. And he trailed until the last 20 seconds or so. One minute. We're down to a minute left, first period, 2-2. Two -two. Well, they're in a situation right here where there's not a lot Lochner can do. You can see there that uh, Chase guy's legs locked up a lot like Mike Sheets does, where he's got that leg, and he's trying to crank him over, but Alan Lochner's a pretty hard guy to turn over from that position. One thing, we got a little time here. We got to make sure to mention that next week on Thursday and Friday, we've got the high school state wrestling meet right here in Gallagher Hall. So be all kinds of high school. All four classes are going to be here. So this should be a great show here from Stillwater. There you see Che trying what we call a gut wrench. You've got to stop that guy's shoulders less than a 45 degree angle for at least a second. And he didn't quite do it at that point, so there's no back points. Down to five seconds, period one. Minute 55 of advantage time for Oklahoma as we will start the second period. So at this point, the All-American Dan Chade looking strong. Not only mentioned in the high school state meet, but we've got the Big 8 wrestling tournament here in Stillwater. We, Thursday and Friday, we go with the high school meet. Saturday and Sunday, we go with the Big 8. We'll, maybe we'll see some of these same matchups again where Burke might go again against Anderson. Some great matchup when you bring Iowa State in here. We've got some good individual wrestlers in the Shear Brothers from Nebraska. Missouri's got a few good wrestlers. We put all that together, and we've got a great weekend coming up in wrestling here in the state of Oklahoma. You see the high school meet for two days and the Big 8 for two days, so things should really be popping when can't it comes you to guys, wrestling. Can't you guys get enough around here? I guess we can't. We've got, <laughs> we got the first step of the Olympic trials on the national freestyle here on March the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, so... You want to get a chance to see some Olympic hopefuls. You know, whenever you're in Olympic year, all the wrestlers seem to be competing. So you want to mark those three days on your calendar here in Gallagher Hall where this is the USA. Uh, first step in, in getting their Olympic team, all the people will be back in Olympic year. So that should be great. That's not for about another month, but next week will be jam-packed full of wrestling. 
145 left in the second period. With the advantage is Alan Lochner of OSU right now, trying to write off some of that minute and a half advantage time that Dan Chade has accumulated to this point. Well, Chade, Chade gets a reversal there. Yeah, he caught him in a grand, it was called a Granby roll or Granby cradle. And he can, you can score back points as he did right there. He got two back points. Now there's a situation the ref's saying he's got to move up off that ankle. And Shade gets him back into the middle of that mat. Now they posted the scores up there. See, it was two to two. Well, Lochner was riding and now he turned him over in that thing called a Granby Cradle. And in the rule book, as soon as they give the points on that, if your back's exposed, they start counting out near fall points. And that's what the referee did. And Chade made a four point move right there. So he's taking command of the match with a quick Granby Cradle. You don't see that move much anymore. Under a minute left now, second period. That again is one of those things we talk about in wrestling where just one quick move, you know, we start out in the first period and we have a, an exchange, a quick exchange, a takedown by Lochner and an immediate reversal by Chade. Lochner's riding along, got about 45 to 50 seconds riding time. Looks like he's controlling Dan Chade and immediately hits a Granby Cradle and makes a four point move out of it. And he's got Alan Lochner down by four with a minute to go in the second period. He's got a tough ride on him again. Got that leg locked up. Spend a lot of energy right there in that situation just trying to get back up to your knees. Boy, that one rumbled through Gallagher Hall as these 277 pounders went to the mat. 25 seconds left, second period. 6 2 the lead for Dan Chade of Oklahoma. Hey, Alan Lockers wrestling a good match to this point. Being that he was beaten 14 to 1 in the earlier match, I know Oklahoma expected to pick up some extra team points here, but. Just that one move by Chade, which is a really nice move, but Lochner's right in this match, so he may not be able to get any major superior points. And with two minutes of wrestling coming up and an advantage time advantage of 255, you'd almost consider Chade ahead 7-2 at this point. So if he can get three more, he'd be looking at that major decision that Oklahoma's looking for at this point. And we move to period number three. Oklahoma State 22, Oklahoma 6. Two matches coming up at 190, and then the heavyweights. Should be a great matchup in the Big 8 when you see Dan Chade against one of the Shear brothers from Nebraska. In fact, they've got the two highest ranked wrestlers in that weight in the Big 8. That should be a great matchup. You see Chade trying to put a cradle on him, and he's got it, but he's pretty high. See, and there he slipped off. The Alan Locker trying for the reversal. Almost Chade got it. Did a good job of holding on, though. Didn't lose any points. He got a little aggressive there, trying to turn him over. You see the clock in the background, that advantage time moving upward, the third period time moving downward. 6 to the lead for Oklahoma's Dan Chay. So even with riding time, he's only ahead by five. If he's going to get some extra team points, he's got to score three more points. The referee's signaling there that that's a warning. He just gave, gave a warning for Alan Locker for stalling underneath. Chade trying to put a bar on him and turn him over, but hasn't been successful all this far. One minute to wrestle, one minute. One minute remaining. Well, he's a little high again. Dan Chade has certainly shown us some creativity in this match. Crowds get a little excited. They think that Allen's got a chance to get out of there, but Chade keeps doing whatever he has to do right at the last second to avert any kind of a reversal. And he's got to go for it right now with 30 seconds to go. If he's going to get any extra points, he's going to have to turn him over on his back. He basically has a five-point lead with that advantage time, which reads 435. The time running out for any hopes of an Oklahoma major decision here that looks like they are obviously going to get the decision. He's trying to tip him toward his back right there, but he wasn't successful. 
Dan Shade, a powerful performance here at 177. Seven seconds remaining. of this match probably doesn't come to a surprise to people looking at it before the start, but it is a surprise in the score in that Alan Lochter wrestled a good match, stayed right in the middle of it. There it is. Oklahoma State fans give their man a nice hand. Alan Lochter, who was decisioned by Dan Chate of Oklahoma, 7-2. Three points for the Sooners, none for the Cowboys. It's 22-9, Oklahoma State. We've got the 190-pounders coming up next, live from Gallagher Hall in Stillwater on Tulsa Cable Sports. Your Holland Stillwater Cowboys. 22-9. Oklahoma got its third winner of the evening at 177. Dan Shade. Now we go to 190, Dave. That's right. We've got David Palmer of Oklahoma. He's just a freshman. And he's got a 20-7-1 and and record. His brother used to wrestle for Iowa University. He was an All-American there. Uh, you see his season record is his career record. Like I say, he just started as a freshman for Oklahoma State. One of their best wrestlers in Carl Lyons. You see him just loosen up. Look and see his season record of 23 and 2, and a career record of 49 11. He was a national junior college champion before he came to Oklahoma State. So this is really only his second year of competition. In this match, you'd have to definitely pick Carl Lyons as a heavy favorite. Only lost two times during the year. Last week, he defeated Pete Bush, who was the not last year, but the year before, national champion for Iowa University. Uh, he's looked great this year. He's got a good season. Carl's beaten Oklahoma wrestlers three out of four times in his career. Palmer, 0 for 1 from that duel back in December. Lost a major decision to Lions, 10-2, at the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman. One thing about David Palmer, though, he does a lot of things. You know, he sometimes you like to see a freshman that does things. Even if he makes mistakes, you can correct those mistakes and he, mistakes and he gets better. It's hard to make a guy get better that doesn't do anything. And in the last match, even though he was beaten decisively, he made a lot of movement and had a lot of things going for him. So, I, you know, looking at the Oklahoma University team, they've got a lot of young kids. They only have three seniors on their team as compared to Oklahoma State. Heavy in seniors. They've got five people that won't be back next year. Um, two national champions and a runner-up, so they're going to be hit heavily by graduation. They've got some fine kids coming back in to fill in. OU, though, has got a good young team. I see a lot of good things. They, they're wrestling one, two, three, four freshmen on their team tonight. So that means they've got some pretty good kids that are going to be back for some time. Man on your left, Carl Lyons, if he looks big, he's 6'4". David Palmer, six feet tall, both going 190. Well, they always joke, Carl, that if he doesn't make it in wrestling, he can go to the NBA. <laughs> Probably be tough under those boards, huh? <laughs> Grabbing and shoving under there in establishing position. Almost yeah. halfway now through the first period. No score, no advantage time registered. You know, because he is so tall, he's really deceptive to wrestle. A lot of people look at him and think, oh, he'd be so easy to get in there on those legs. And they get a little careless. He's got a tremendous head snap. Nice move there. See, that's what I'm talking about in Palmer, though. He made a nice move. He didn't finish it up, but he was in tight on Carl Lyons. But I've seen Carl right here in Gallagher Hall decisively beat Mike Mann, uh, All-American from Iowa State that nobody thought could be beaten, and I saw him last week be easily beat Pete Bush 5-0 from Iowa. So though they really get their eyes open when they come in and wrestle Carl. Dan Shade down at the end of the floor doing a little jump roping after his victory. I don't see any of the OSU fans telling him to sit down either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'd mess with him. There you see him way back there in the background jumping rope after his match. Turning it into a little bit of a training effort here tonight. You start Meanwhile to see on more the floor. wrestlers do that. You know, Bob, I guess they're doing that. A lot of them, when they're wrestling multiple nights, they're training after the match so to keep their weight down. But a lot of them think they just loosen up by doing that, get a good sweat up, and, and can kind of keep their weight under control. 30 seconds left, first period, no score so far, no riding time. Matchup, David Palmer, a freshman of Muncie, Indiana for Oklahoma. Carl Lines, a Ponca City senior for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State 22, Oklahoma 9, with this match in the heavyweights remaining. Well, the dual meet is out of the question right now. Even with two falls, oh, you can't win the dual meet. So it's a situation where they're just trying to wrestle the best they can in the individual matches. 
two, the most they can score is 12 more points. That just still be 22 for Oklahoma State, 21 for OU. There's a double warning there, both wrestlers. No score, we've only got five seconds to go in the period. <laughs> so three minutes of scoreless action. Now we set the clock at two minutes for the second period coming up. You know, we've seen several matches tonight where the first period has ended scoreless. You would think, being that that happened, that we'd have a lot of boring and low-scoring matches. Some of the matches have been boring, uh, you know, low scoring, but I wouldn't say boring. It right. seems like they get the action going quite a bit more after that first period. Well, we had a good flurry in this match about a minute or so in. And boy, some of these things have just exploded in the second period. There you see a reversal by Carl. Made a nice little move. So he gets two. Palmer tried to kind of put a cross body on him there. And David Palmer really disappointed in himself. Put his head down to the mat and kind of shook his head. Palmer adjusting that knee brace and lines the same behind him, getting in position. 25 seconds into the second period. 2 0, the Oklahoma State wrestler. There you see Lyons right away. So he'll try to try to trap that head and even see if he can't pick that cradle up right from the whistle. Palmer's doing a good job of turning into it. But see how long he is? He just kind of reaches over. He, he's trying to block that head. And then as the guy comes up with that outside knee, the one he's got bandies right there, he tries to throw a cradle on him. And it's deceptive because he's just over the top of you. Most wrestlers don't have that reach. See that? He's grabbing that leg again. They don't have that reach, and the next thing you know, you get up on your feet and you're in a cradle. And he scores a lot of back points like that. One minute, second period. Less than a minute left in the second period. Coming up, the heavyweights, Mark Tatum, a freshman of Ponca City for Oklahoma. Perry Kaufman, a Tahlequah junior for the Cowboys. Carl Lines on top. On the scoreboard as well, 2-0 at this point. Clock says 35 seconds left, period two. Whenever you see the referee counting like that, what he's doing is he's saying, in this situation, he's saying to Palmer, he's saying, you've got to move, you've got to do something from underneath, you're, you're stalling, and then he's, he's making a hand motion to let the wrestler know that he's counting and saying, if you don't do something, if you don't change your position, then it's gonna be a stall warning. I think that's good because visually the wrestler knows what the referee is because as a referee you're not supposed to talk to the man and go out there and say give him instructions you're just supposed to call the points but when you make a visual count he knows that he has to change his position ten seconds left now that riding time getting up there as well. It'll be somewhere around a minute 20 when we move to period number three in favor of Carl Lyons, who leads 2-0 in the match. So Oklahoma State looking good now at 190. Carl Lyons has a bounce to him right now as he prepares for the final two minutes of action. Meanwhile, David Palmer looks a little bit tired. He's been on the receiving end of most of the action so far. Well, even though we've had a couple falls in the match tonight with Mark Perry at 118 and uh, Luke Scove at 142, the matches have all been close to the point where the fall came. The only one-sided match we've had really was uh, the 15-4 victory with Kenny Mundy over Darren Abel. So really in the second go-around, the wrestlers that were beaten badly in the match down in Norman for either team have really come on and done better. Uh, Abel was not pinned this time. Uh, Dan Chade only beat uh, Lochner 7-2. So we're seeing the matches tighten up, and I guess maybe that's the way it ought to be later in the season. David Palmer here lost a major decision to Carl Lines 10-2, but he's hanging in tough at 2-0. Although you'd have to consider Lines right now basically 3-0 because of that advantage time. Minute 20 left in the match. Two minutes advantage time racked up. That's right, and you're hearing the crowd clap a little there. You see him in the background. What happened was that was a stall warning. Uh, David Kincaid out of your screen, but he warned them both at the end of the first period. At this point, he said that uh, Palmer's stalling again. That's a one point, so 
Carl leads 3-0. And over two minutes minute. riding time on the clock. Carl last year was a force to be reckoned with at 190, although he had a bad match, his first match in the Nationals, and was pinned unexpectedly. It was an upset, but they thought he would be an All-American last year. And the way he's wrestling this year, I'd have to say he'll be right in the thick of the race at 190 pounds. Oklahoma State's got eight guys on their team ranked in the top eight in the nation, and OU's got five wrestlers ranked in the top eight. So we've got some good competition in every match. Carl Lines, the number five wrestler at 190. 49-11 career. He's looking for his fourth victory in five outings against Oklahoma wrestlers. David Palmer unable to get any points so far. As we go down to 10 seconds remaining now, it looks like Carl Lyons will be heading for a 5-0 victory once you add the extra point for advantage time, which is going to be about 3 minutes and 18 or 19 seconds when we wrap it up. Two seconds left now. Well, even though it was, there wasn't many points scored, it was a good effort by David Palmer. He stayed in the match all the time. He got some stalling points, but that's to be expected. Last time he was beaten, uh, what, 10-2? Ten 10-2. Ten There's a big difference between that and 5 nothing. That's right. He came back and saved some team points there. So Carl Lines taking David Palmer 5 nothing into the decision at 190. Oklahoma State takes an even bigger lead now over the Sooners of Oklahoma. It's a 16-point spread. Oklahoma State 25, and the Sooners of Oklahoma 9. Coming up, the heavyweights. Mark Tatum, a freshman of Ponca City for the Sooners. Harry Kaufman, a junior from Tahlequah for the OSU Cowboys. Stay with us on Tulsa Cable Sports for our final match. Congratulations in store for Carl Lines, a senior from Baca City for OSU, a 5-0 decision over Damon Palmer of the Oklahoma Sooners. Now we go to the heavyweights for Oklahoma freshman Mark Tatum of Ponca City. He is 5-12-1 this year for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Perry Kaufman, a junior from Tahlequah, 11-5-1. Bob, this could be a big match even though neither one of these wrestlers is ranked. Neither one of them wrestled in the first duel early in the year. Tatum was not in the lineup, as was Perry Coffin. Neither one of them. So we haven't seen them. They've not wrestled before. Could be a great match. Dave, as you look ahead to the Nationals coming up, the Big A Championships, of course, what about the prospects of these two teams in the heavyweight division, considering they have no one that is ranked? Nationally, neither one of these guys is ranked, and, and they'd have to really pull some upsets to get in there on a national um, you know, ranking, or as far as is, there you see Mark Tatum's career record or, and season record. Both of these is just as freshmen. But, you know, heavyweight is probably year in and year out the way where you see more upsets. You see people that haven't been ranked during the year coming in to be All-Americans. So you never know. A lot of these big wrestlers are football players, and sometimes they don't get in shape till the second half of the year. So heavyweight's one of those ones that anybody can come into play. Somebody gets hot and have a good tournament. Tatum is listed at 5'10", 190, which is not that big for a heavyweight. There he comes see. up with two points right there. That's right. Kaufman tried to make a trip, and, and Tatum just went the other way on him, and he got the two points. Gary Kaufman, 11-5-1 this year, 16-22-1 career. Has never beaten an Oklahoma wrestler. In the 81 duel, pinned by Dr. Death, Steve Williams, after only 20 seconds. See, and then decision by Williams season. that same year, 8-1. But he's doing well this year. That's right. He's been a pleasant surprise for Coach Chesper. Like, he didn't really expect me to see his career record. He hasn't won as many as lost, but he's had some tough guys to go against. But Tommy thinks he's coming on this year well. He's having a little trouble right now with Tatum. This is Tatum's first match ever against OSU. He did not wrestle in the duel December 9th at the Lloyd Noble Center. doing a good job of keeping Perry's head down. you got to get that head up off the mat if you want to get out and score in wrestling. Perry Kaufman, of course, a uh, two-year teammate of Mike Sheets over in Tahlequah. State champion, all-state winner as a senior. Also lettered in football three times, as you might expect. But I tell you, Mark Tatum, a recruit, Ponca City, who is 31-0 in high school in his senior year, is giving Mr. Kaufman all he wants at this point. Under a minute left, first period, 2-0, Oklahoma leads it. 
but Tatum's definitely controlled to this point. Now there you see calling both wrestlers for stalling, saying that uh, Tatum's not being aggressive on top and that Kaufman's not trying to get out from underneath. The one thing we want to really mention before this match gets away from us, at this point there's no uh, question about Oklahoma State's going to win the duel. And you know, they've capped off an unbelievable season. Last weekend, beat number one ranked Iowa 24 to 6, the worst defeat that Iowa had since 1969. Uh, and then come back and this uh, tonight win their 43rd straight match. That's an unbelievable record for wrestling the way it is now, and especially with the domination that Iowa's had up to the last few years in the national tournament, winning six straight times. There you see Perry getting an escape for up on the feet. 30 seconds, first period. The crowd's kind of getting into it now. There's 25 seconds to go. Two to one, Tatum leading Perry Coffin. You know, the big question in all fans around here is, can anybody break Iowa's string in the, in the Nationals? You know, they beat Iowa soundly in the duel, but anyone that saw it, you know, it was a very close match. You don't match get to play the Nationals at Gallagher Hall. That's right, that's right. When you get on a neutral site, there's no telling what happened. And if you look at the record book with Iowa six in a row, they're going to be pretty tough to dethrone. They've got another great team this year. You know, now that Tommy Chesbrough's team has won this one this evening as we finish up the period. Two won the score, Oklahoma leading. Tommy Chesbro, after this evening's decision, will be 201 over. His wins will be 201 better than his losses. He will be 227 and 26 in his career. Abel, very respectable, 176, 57 and 4. Oklahoma State will go to 19 and 0 on the year. They will be number one after beating Iowa last year, as you saw, Tommy. Oklahoma will fall to 16 and 4. Number three in the rankings, but they may tumble a bit. Well, I've been pretty impressed by OU showing tonight. I don't think they will drop much, if any, because if you look at the other teams that are in there, uh, OU's win it or, or is going to be beaten soundly on the team score, you know. But but they wrestled well tonight, and I think they probably are the third best team right now in the United States. Nothing ashamed of to come into Gallagher Hall and get beat. I know the big question in Coach Chesbro's mind right now is, can he, can he beat Iowa again in the Nationals? I mean, it, it goes right down to fall points. It goes down to how your seeding is. And that's the thing that's really eluded Oklahoma State in the last few years. They've been ranked one before. The question is, they really want to win, and can they win that national title? That's what, they trade all these dual meets. I guarantee you they trade every dual win this year if they can win that national championship. Well, he's trying to call time there, I think. Yeah, I think Perry got his arm hurt there when he chopped it down, kind of breaking him down. Looks like he got his elbow or something hurt there. Jeff Fair, the trainer, will come out once more. 116 left in the second period, 225 advantage time for Oklahoma's Mark Tatum, a freshman. Well, this would be an upset. I mean, Tatum, even though neither one of them are ranked, he definitely wouldn't have been picked as the favorite in this match. By the way, for you folks tuning in on Tulsa Cable Sports this evening, wondering about our upcoming events, we will have... Basketball for you on Monday night. The ORU Titans will be at Butler, Indianapolis, to take on the Butler Bulldogs and MCC play as the Titans wrap up their road conference schedule. There you see Big Mitch. Mitch Sheldon out of Afton, Missouri. And he was OSU's heavyweight last year, and I always like to have him. He was a big favorite of the crowd. Now, when you look at Mitch and look at the guys on the floor now, you can see that the Oklahoma State Cowboys have lost a little bit in the heavyweight division. And when you think about Dr. Death Steve Williams two years ago for Oklahoma, you see where the Sooners have as well. That's you right. just don't go around replacing guys like that in the moment. That's right. I was talking to a coach from Afton High School in St. Louis today. He told me that he had a he went on a car trip with Mitch Shelton one day, and between two cities that were about 30 miles apart, Mitch put away about two dozen donuts. <laughs> Great well, wrestler, see, though. As the wrestlers went off the mat right there, referee David Kincaid warned Perry Kaufman again for stalling. Now, they'd been warned, both wrestlers, in the first period. So that cost him a, a match point. So with 48 seconds in the second period left, the score is now 3-1 to one in favor of Mark Tatum. Yeah, Big Mitch, I'll tell you one thing, he probably weighs about 450, and the biggest wrestler we have out here, Perry Coffin's about 6'5 or 6'6, weighs about 260, but he's not even near as big as Big Mitch. Tatum trying to work for that pin. 30 seconds left, second period. He's riding a lot of advantage time at this point. 315 right now. Mark 
Tatum's doing a good job here of keeping Perry Coffin broken down. And Perry, every time he gets his head up or his legs up to try to break loose, Tatum's taking something away from him. He's making him carry his weight. And that's what seems to tire the heavyweights out. Tatum, of course, not particularly big for a heavyweight at 190. At least that's what he was listed at the start of the season in the press guide. So after the second period, he has a 3-1 lead. And really, you have to consider it now 4-1 because he's got 3.40 riding time with only two minutes left in the match. That's right. Perry Coffin's going to have to make some kind of a big move to get back into it because Tatum's really controlling him. Stan Abel talking to his freshman out of Ponca City. 5-12-1 is Mark Tatum this year. At the other end, Jeff Fair, the trainer, as well as coach Tommy Chesbro, out checking on Perry Kaufman, his junior from Tahlequah. One of the things that we haven't really talked much about tonight is that these matches have such a bearing on the big eight seedings. Like I say, that tournament starts uh, a week from tonight at 6 o'clock in Gallagher Hall. But every one of these matches is really decisive in where these guys get seated in the big eight. You know, and, and in that tournament, you can get a guy on the side away from the OU and Iowa State wrestler or, or vice versa. That's big team points. And, you know, you take a heavyweight like this, he could get in the finals if he gets a good draw in the big eight. So I know each coach is concerned how these wrestlers did right here because it's coming to the seating next week. Three of Oklahoma's five rated wrestlers have been winners tonight. Mark Tatum would like to be number four. So really, when you look at it from a one-on-one a -on -one standpoint, Oklahoma State would only win it six to four on an individual basis. That, of course, not counting the points at stake. There's two for a takedown for Tatum. That'll be 5-1, make it six with the advantage time. That's right. O OU was one more match tonight than they did in the earlier duel. The thing that changed the whole thing and makes the score look so one-sided are the fall points coming from Mark Perry at 118 and coming from Luke Scovitt at, at 142. So in other words, you might say, Dave, that when you look at the final score in the newspaper tomorrow, you might think OSU dominated this match more than it really did. That's right. When you had six and four, it could have been a really close match. And I tell you, the match, uh, again, the key matches, just like it was in the Iowa match and what their coaches said before they started, the key matches, 126 and 118 because OU thought they had a chance to win both of those where they, in fact, got pinned and lost it at 126. So that's where the match was decided. I say that early momentum. It was a great match at 134 with Clint Burke and Anderson, but the stage was set, I think, in the first two matches. OSU, 19-0 now this year. Oklahoma will be 16-4, very respectable. Two of those losses, of course, to the soon-to-be number one team in the nation, the Cowboys. We've got 105 left in our evening of wrestling. Four minutes and 30 seconds plus advantage time here for Mark Tatum, who has really dominated this match. That's right, an impressive showing for Mark tonight. And he's a freshman, wrestling a junior, don't forget. And Perry Kaufman comes from a very good program at Tahlequah that has produced Mike Sheets. Tatum out of Ponca City. Only Ponca City wrestler we've seen here this evening. No, we don't hear the crowd really yelling tonight in the heavyweight match, but I tell you, just think if it would have come down to the very last match. There you see Perry Coffin getting a reversal. That puts it back to five to three. There's only 20 seconds to go, though. So he's going to have to turn him loose and try yeah, to Yeah, he's got to turn him loose and then go for another takedown. That's where they were screaming at him from the bench. Look out, cheerleaders. He held on a little bit too long there, Dave, and wasted some valuable time. That's right. The only thing Perry can do here, he's got to take him down and put him on his back. But you never know what could happen. Has he got enough left? The Cowboy fans hope so. Five seconds left as Tatum snuck a look at the clock. That'll do it. Seven to three, the decision for Mark Tatum of the Oklahoma Sooners. He is the fourth Oklahoma wrestler to win a decision tonight. OSU will have the final by a 25-12 score. Back with more from Gallagher Hall as we wrap up the evening with our thoughts in a moment.
OSU Cowboys impressively over the Sooners of Oklahoma, 25 to 12. OSU moves to 19 and 0 on the year. The Sooners are 16 and 4. Bob Carpenter back along with Dave Martin. Again, Dave, we make the point. It was 25-12 OSU. But if you look at the one-on-one -on -one matchups, the Sooners managed four victories here tonight. That speaks well for them, especially on the road here in Gallagher Hall. That's right. I'm sure that Coach Stan Abel is impressed with the way his Sooners perform. They won four matches. Where they lost it was the fall points. They got pinned at 118 pounds. They were unexpectedly pinned at 142, where they were leading right up to the last few seconds of the match. Early, the first three or four matches, that's where the tide turned toward Oklahoma State. Overall, it was a much better match than when they wrestled down in Norman. A lot more action. Both teams wrestled more aggressively, and their conditioning was better. I think that shows well for both teams as they go into the Big 8 meet. They should be both be pretty impressive. As we look ahead now, the OSU Cowboys, after the win over Iowa, and of course beating the Sooners here tonight, will be ranked number one. Iowa will be number second, and it remains to be seen whether Oklahoma will hang in at the number third spot. But I know that you feel that at this time, Oklahoma, based on their performance tonight, is the be is the third best team in the nation behind the first two, which I think we all agree is a little bit of a class above the others right now. That's right. This year, I believe that Iowa and Oklahoma State are head and shoulders above the other team. But don't forget that Oklahoma University is very young this year. Iowa State is a young young team this year, but Oklahoma State and Iowa both have veteran teams. They should be the best this year. I think in the national tournament, they'll be head and shoulders above the others. That doesn't mean that Oklahoma University won't get some individuals in there and a lot of, some, a lot of the other teams, but when you look at who will get the most All-Americans, you got you got to let that toward Iowa and Oklahoma State. They'll fight it out right down to the end for the national championship. Dave, sure enjoy working with you tonight. Fun night here in Gallagher Hall. Thank you. It's always great to be at the Bedlam Series. It's a classic in athletics. Anywhere you go, Oh, this is something you have to see. We'll say goodnight from Gallagher Hall in Stillwater. The OSU Cowboys win at 25-12. Basketball, Monday night at 6.30. ORU at Butler. Join us on Tulsa Cable Sports for Oklahoma State. Are they